Hey everyone, this week, episode three of the deadly playthrough, full campaign playthrough for Gloomhaven Digital. We take on Well of the Unfortunate, which is a side mission that we got unlocked. We also go against Forgotten Crypt and Ruinous Rift, both main storyline missions. I decided to not just go the very kind of direct route with this playthrough. So we will be doing side missions. As I said, we got one today and we'll also be kind of doing uh, our own kind of snaking route through the campaign. We're not necessarily going to do it in the quickest possible way, which I've done in other playthroughs. We do also unlock Prosperity Level 2 towards the end of this episode, so we do get ourselves some new items, but we're still not there with our character retirements yet, so we're still rocking the original starting three mercenaries, the Crackheart, the Tinkerer, and the Mind Thief. If you do enjoy this playthrough and you would like to see it live, I do stream this on Mondays over at twitch.tv slash request. We also stream every Wednesday and Sunday. Wednesday, usually weird builds and interesting ideas and challenges that people come up with with Gloomhaven. And on Sunday, we do the community save, which is where I'm actually playing multiplayer with viewers. So come hang out on any of those days. And yeah, come hang out, play Gloomhaven, chat Gloomhaven. Always good to have people on the stream. Okay, I won't hold you up any longer. Let's get in to this week's episode, episode three. Okay, so quests that we can do. So I think we could we could probably go. I mean, plane of elements of power is what we've got to go and do. We've got this. Well, of the unfortunate, which is a side quest and might be kind of fun to do. I've got to remind myself what our personal quests are. Um, so donate 120 gold. I mean, that's maybe we should just start doing this every single time now to start getting close. I think that might be a good idea. Oh, interesting. Is that a new in the patch? Concealed personal quest. Interesting. That's got to be new. I didn't notice that before. That's kind of neat. But anyway, we should probably just start doing this every single time now, I think. Um, kill 20 bandits or cultists. So if we can find something with bandits or cultists, that would be great. Um, and six side scenarios. So let's just do side scenarios. So side scenario with cultists or bandits in. Well, there's cultists in that one. Hmm... Oh, the, oh, sorry, that's Ruinous Crypt. We've already done that one. What's this there? Oh, do we want to do the hail quest? Hmm. I've actually only got one side quest right now. That kind of sucks. Maybe we'll go do the side quest. I don't think I've done well of the unfortunate in a very long time. I don't even remember it very much. So sounds like a good one. Bandits and cultists of Black Barrow. Yeah, I, I, I want to kind of play the game naturally though, Lucas. Because it's just, I don't find it fun going back and replaying scenarios. Which is why I don't like some of the personal quests. Because I just find them to be a little bit hard to do naturally. I like the ones that you can kind of just do. And they just happen. And that makes more sense to me. Rather than you having to force stuff. I don't mind forcing the odd scenario here or there. But I don't really want to um, just keep running Black Barrow. I mean, I think we've had our fill of Black Barrow for a little while. But it would be nice to do something a bit different. So let's go and do this. But let's make sure we donate. If we haven't already. We've already done it. That's good. Ah, we've already done it on everybody. Nice. Okay. That's good. I think in terms of enhancements, didn't we go for like the... Uh, I think we went for the Massive Boulder one, didn't we? We did. This is going to be interesting. This definitely increases the value of backup ammunition massively. The backup ammunition is now going to be something we definitely want to do, like, a lot. And we want to use Massive Boulder pretty much exclusively. Maybe ending it up with a Forceful Storm kind of turn, but pretty exclusively going to be Massive Boulder. 25 gold here. I think we've got the one enhancement that we can get right now. We need to get this up. So we can get to another enhancement. All right, let's go do this. You have found some <clears throat> writings which document the existence of an old well in the plains northwest of Gloomhaven. Isn't hammering nails easier if you're hammered yourself? <laughs> I find it to be more dangerous, to be honest. <laughs> According to a legend, if you drop something of value into the well, it will grant any wish. Oh. Intrigued, you go in search of it. Hmm. 
Wishing well? Okay. First road event of the day. You guys fancy voting on this. Manage poll. New poll. New polls, please. Right, which option should we go for, chat? Heading down the main road, you see an odd-looking wagon in front of you. It is covered in metal bars and a number of ragged men in chains walk behind it. On either side of the wagon, you see city guards on horseback keeping a watchful eye on everything. You get closer and one of the guards calls out to you. Keep your distance. We are transporting dangerous criminals. A moment later, one of the prisoners in back slips out of his manacles <clears throat> and begins to sprint full speed into the tall grass. Do we help the guards catch their escaping man or interfere with the guards to help the man escape? Now, bear in mind, we're not really playing an evil or a good playthrough. We're kind of just doing whatever suits us for the time. So, option one would be to help the guards catch their escaping man. Option two is to interfere with the guards to help the man escape. So, we're just kind of doing whatever, however we feel at the time. We're not, we're not latching onto anything in particular. Because we've got the personal quest for both the Eclipse and for the Sun in our party right now, so... You can replay any scenario to complete a personal quest or it didn't count. Yes, you absolutely can. Second video, you absolutely can. Um, I just personally dislike doing it because I find it to be a little bit boring. But if you really want to get one over the line, absolutely. And it's a good way of doing it. Right, everyone's got option one to help the guards catch their escaping man. Feeling feeling very, uh, very noble today, every chat. Plus one rep, nice. We'll take that. The man's speed after spending months in jail is no match for your own. With the help of the guards on horseback, you quickly have him cornered and returned to the wagon. Good job. We'll take that plus one rep. It's probably better to go for, like, less cost. A short distance from the well's supposed location, you run across a finely dressed middle-aged man, crouched down and weeping into his hands. Hmm. Hey, Oak Pope. Good to see you, buddy. Long time no see. Hope you're doing well. There's no hope left. My daughter is dying, and no medic can help her, no matter what money I throw at them. I went searching for anything that could possibly save her, and my last hope was to throw this doll of hers down the well and wish for a miracle. The man sobs violently, then continues, but the whole shrine is overrun by vermlings. There's no way to get to the well. She's doomed. You sigh and grab the doll. For a price... You'll get the doll to the well. To the well. What's the team tonight? Yep, Craig, Vinkara, Mind Theft. <laughs> I like those names. The perfect combination. Pretty much my favorite um, starting combination. I, th I think it is my starting, my favorite starting combination. Trying to get better with the Mind Thief. Getting the positioning down ahead of time is tough. Keep having awkward turns and he's scurried to save me. Mind Thief is one of those characters that, um, yeah, you... I think it can be a little bit difficult if you fall out of sync. Like, you almost have to force the Mind Thief turns a little bit. And remember to use your Stamina Potion pretty aggressively. Like, I'm actually quite bad at that. I, I quite often forget to use Stamina Potions. Um, generally, it's a character that probably wants to use their Stamina Potion quite early. Okay, so never allow your current hit point value to drop below half. Pretty much impossible, so we won't do that. Gain seven or fewer experience points. That does mean we won't be able to play backup ammunition, really. Which does suck, because this is going to be a great scenario for it with living spirits and, and uh, forest imps. We can try, we're just going to have to be very careful. Take only short rest. Possible. Reveal a room tile. I don't know how many rooms there are. I'm going to say yeah. I mean, I, I like, again, this is one of those times where I just wish the information was there. I haven't played this one in so long. I could probably find it in the book. I'll go to my tools, actually. Let's go to tools. I know there was a reason why I made this. And go and find it. I 
I'm not going to look at it too hard. I just want to know if there's more than one room. There's more than one room. Okay, great. That's all I needed to know. Um, kill an undamaged monster with a single attack. Be the first to kill something. Very easy for us to try and do that. To be honest, that probably happened pretty naturally. Um, I think we were bringing Brain Leech back in, right? Because we were we took out Submissive Affliction last time. That looks about right to me. Yeah, that looks good. All right, nice. And there is a unclaimed reward on this. You and your friends call them Rock, Brain Head, and Rat. <laughs> I do think that like Tinker looks a little bit like like the eggheads or whatever it was. You know, the um or like the weird Martians from um Mars Attacks. <laughs> it's got that kind of like weird extraterrestrial look about about the character. Looks like a combination of what is it like the cone heads plus uh yeah, Mars Attacks Martians. <laughs> it's kind of like a like a bit odd it's a weird head <laughs> all right what do we got what do we got what do we got feeling very blessed right now Well, that's quite a lot of enemies for the first room. Jeez, that's a lot of enemies for the first room. Huh. Well, sometimes the Vermlings don't do a lot. Those three shields, though. Hmm. Okay. So we need to pick up the doll. The doll can be passed from one mercenary to another by performing a loot action within range of whoever is holding the doll. If a mercenary becomes exhausted, the doll will be dropped on the hex they occupied. Beware, more vermlings may appear behind you unexpectedly in this scenario. This is not the first time they've done this. Great. This is the kind of information that we need more of this for other scenarios. So who has the doll right now? Is it like listed anywhere? I need to pick up the doll first. Where is the doll? Oh, it's there. Oh. Huh. Okay. Bring this to the well to win the scenario. What happens if one of them loots it? Can they loot it? I wonder if the Vermlings could steal it. That would be an interesting twist. <laughs> it took you five minutes to even notice the doll. Yeah, that's weird. It was only because I moused over and that popped up. I was like, oh. Like, it should be... I, I feel like it should be... Like, highlighted with an outline or something. Like, that's quite hard to see. Especially if it's, like, gold. It should just be highlighted like a gold pile would be. Like, go. Huh. I like it, though. I definitely haven't played this scenario before. I do not remember this scenario at all. I'm already liking it, though. Feels very cool. Thinking about the hook gun here. I don't think I'm going to be ink bombing anytime soon. I think we know it's some combination of this and this on these guys.
Oh, good. Off to a great start. At least it was on our attack one. Can't really complain at that. Um... That might have been a bit dumb, actually, because I was going to move to there. Yeah, that was dumb. I should just immobilize this. Hmm. Yeah, I don't know why I did that. Let's quickly... Let's just restart the round. We're close enough. <clears throat> This is a fun scenario, though. I have, yeah, this is looking good. I like the idea behind it, for sure. Right, let's do that again. I just messed that up. I wasn't paying attention to what I was trying to do. There we go. 8, 20, 29. Perfect. Go. Even with the time still plus 2, it wouldn't do anything. Yeah, I know. So it is a good one to flip, but it's never nice when you flip one of those on the first turn of the scenario. It makes you feel like... Uh, a sign of things to come, possibly. There's a lot of curse in this scenario, too. A lot of curse. It should be a blue hex, like chess, maybe. Yeah, I think so. It's just anything. Because this is really hard for, for people to see. I'll try and take that one. <laughs> Fairly decent position here. They're going to move away from me, unfortunately, which kind of blows. I think it is that good now. Try and split the damage a little bit here. Just a little bit. Okay, well, we know what we have to do now. May well just be stunned this and that will actually kind of kill it off, most likely. I've also got Restorative Mist, which could be quite nice here. What move? Maybe should have considered doing a... Um, a minus stamina potion for the stun shot to try and stun this this turn. Might have been, might have been the play there. But it's okay. I think we can still make it work. I am very tempted to just unstable upheaval here now, actually having thought about it i mean i'm probably not gonna get much better value than this and i will i will otherwise just die so i've got no armor left i'm on seven health if i don't stun all of these i'm probably gonna die so i guess that means i should just go for it Hmm. 
I'm only going to heal for one there, though. This doesn't feel great. Although I could just crank gun this with my advantage. That seems kind of okay. Let's do that. All right, the imps aren't doing anything. Shamans are healing. They're not doing anything. Okay, I'm not being attacked this round. Interesting. Okay. Let's change things a little bit. That does change. I mean, ultimately, it probably doesn't change what I do here. I guess I'd rather not be strengthened against, like, muddled and strengthened. <clears throat> Smash time. Just so the shaman doesn't draw its disarmonish debate card. Yeah. That card. Well. That kind of sucked. I mean, in a weird way, I don't actually have to use the hammer now. The only thing being is if I miss on these guys, they will heal, which does kind of suck. No, I, I think I need to save the hammer because then I can always get unstable upheaval back again with the tinkerer later. So well, there you go. Perfect. <laughs> no, that's a lot of that's damage. A lot of damage. It is. Thanks, Phil. Wow. Great damage. Good hits. I think that was worth the trade off there, too, just to get rid of that. And now we're in just like a nice spot. I can get back stun shot. Burning Crankbow in the first room is kind of similar to like burning like net shooter or ink bomb. Like you generally burn one card in the first room with a tinkerer, so I'm I'm like I'm really happy with that. Worth it to burn? Absolutely, that was a very worthwhile burn. Stealing my gold now though. I've been stealing my gold. Um, right. To be honest, I probably just want to drop back here a little bit and then just use a massive boulder. I think I just want to move to like here, use massive boulder. Don't have to do anything too crazy. What's with this extra room here? I wonder if this is where the... Is this where the well is? I I'm, I'm guessing I have to open this door. I mean, this scenario doesn't seem long enough to not open the door. I'm going to open that door. I'm going to open the door. Oof. That is kind of a big hit. And I was being clever here. Or attempting to be clever. Okay, we got away with it. We got away with it. You need to go into that room to unlock the other path. The button here to open the path. The north door is locked for now. Oh, you're right. Locked. Hmm. Again, like it would have been... I mean, I, I guess there's the little this on there. Sure. Indicates that it's locked. Hmm. 
A gold there? Might have been better to strengthen and poison bomb first. I've always thought about that. Like, I think that the, the, the doing each one, it's riskier to do it the other way. But then ultimately, you know, I get more damage out of it if I do it that way. It depends on what level you are, I guess, and how important the strength then really is. But yeah, I can definitely see um see it either way. I'll just use Earth and Claude on him now, and then we should be good. Certainly better if you already have Mind's Weakness up. Yeah, yeah. It's definitely better, but it's riskier for sure. And I have been cursed a few times. Always struggled there. Who is carrying the doll? The first guy. The doll's actually on the floor at the start of the scenario. That I don't think was really... Like it says pick up the doll, which is what kind of indicated. I was like, okay, there's something going on here. But the way that the... The way that the narration... And that's not the game's fault. That's from the book. But the way that that kind of was was a is a bit weird. Like it kind of implied that you already had it, and then it's like, oh, now you actually need to go pick it up. And then there's no real indication that this is the way you need to go, apart from the fact that this is locked. Like it's one of those things again where you can kind of figure it out. But I could see somebody maybe, and it's not the it's not the end of the world if you were to go this way and be like, oh, I can't get through this door. I guess I have to go this way first. It's not that bad. But in the in the board game, you would actually know that because it would say like you cannot pass this door until you open this. Like that would be here in this text, right? And they just don't give you quite give you everything in digital. You think it's actually slightly different in the board game? Someone actually starts with the doll. Ah, well then that would explain the weird narration then. Well, that's kind of annoying. <laughs> In tabletop, it is automatically given. Which is interesting. Rip stun lady battle goal. Yeah. I guess the crank bow did it, right? Well, actually, it was the unstable people did it. Hmm. Right, well, we should just be able to kill these two fairly nice and easy here, right? Just need, like, a little ranged attack. Honestly, I'm probably just going to pick up the doll with the crack heart, I think. Sounds like a plan. Uh, reviving shock is probably pretty good here too. If I just run away, <laughs> like to here. And uh, yeah, Maybe like this. All right, some pretty effective looting there too. For me, what is the hardest scenario except boss scenarios? In your opinion, this one we need to close the two, three, four pumps, ancient system. That one is probably one of the hardest. Um, I mean, it's not a core scenario though, right? It's not a core scenario, so you don't have to complete it to win. But 
I mean, oozing, oozing Grove is known to be the hardest scenario. Like, that is what it's renowned for. And I, I do think the ancient, uh, the oozing Grove is potentially quite easy with the right characters. Like, it's just a very specific scenario that has a lot of enemies and it has basically, um, you know, all these respawning enemies. It requires you to have a lot of AoE attacks and reusable AoE attacks or, or a big enough AoE attack that you could clear the room so quickly that it doesn't matter. It's a very specific style of scenario that needs high level characters in general, which is okay. But I think Ancient System you can actually complete with lower level characters, but it is also, yeah, it is very difficult. Um, I, I think I would still say Oozing Grove is the hardest scenario. Just, just, just because of the fact that it requires a very specific party to really win. And you generally have to be high level. Like you need some of the higher level abilities to do it. Hey, McLovin. Stoked to see me streaming this playthrough. Found me wearing Glimmer of Digital full release on YouTube. And you're stoked to see you're doing a full run now. Awesome, dude. Well, welcome in. This will be my... Well, this is my first deadly run through. I've done a full run through on Insane before. But I've never... Uh, this is the first time that I'm actually re like recording it and putting it on. Which actually, you just reminded me. I forgot to hit record at the start of the stream. So I'm going to have to download it from YouTube. which I've downloaded it from Twitch, which kind of sucks. Um, I guess I could start recording now. And then I could... I could... Merge them together. It's alright, I can re- I can download them from Twitch, and they're pretty good quality. They're not that bad. I can download the VODs from there. They're actually pretty good. <laughs> but you did remind me. <laughs> Whoops. I'll start recording from now. So like future future me. There you go. <laughs> right. I have the doll. <laughs> you want the new patch on live they've actually had it's been a while since they patched the new uh like updated the open beta to the live client which is a bit strange maybe there's more bugs this time than usual i know that the advantage disadvantage stuff is not working properly so i know that um this stuff is not working properly in fact i don't know why I don't know why I don't have these on. I should have these on. I thought I already switched them on on this save. Maybe I didn't, but we should switch these on when we can. I think we can do it um, when we go back to town. So we just need to remember to do that next time. But I think that there's some bugs with those anyway, so. Are these white pineapples on my t-shirt? No, it's like a it's like a peacock design. Like a peacock feather design. Um... Hmm. Maybe time to get rid of hostile takeover already. Thing is that it comes so easy to it becomes so easy to control the scenario after the first room. First room is where you really need it. Second room you can kind of do without it. Oh. Um. This is kind of an awkward one to open, actually. It's actually kind of awkward one to open the door. There's a lot of ranged enemies in this scenario. So if there's those imps in here, going invisible on the door while my other two people long rest is actually not a smart move. So I won't do that. I'll just get myself into a decent position. Heal up that last bit and get the mind sweetness going. <clears throat> you believe Lothor or Craig said they need some more time with this patch due to implementing something else besides the enhancement changes? I think that that, well, I, I don't know if they're going for everything. So when I spoke to Craig about, about this, not that Craig. Not me. It wasn't me.
I can't help it if he decided to name himself after me. I mean, I can't blame him. It's a great name. But it was not... It was not me who decided to make those changes. Nothing to do with me. As long as they don't do it, don't mess around with me. Don't mess around with any of my abilities. I don't mind. Leave me alone. Right, what am I getting rid of? Ah. Uh, wow, well, we know we can't use this, this scenario, so... We've already got free XP, right. Um, I don't know. Yeah, that one, go on. That one will do. If we were to create custom content for Gloomhaven, what would I want to create? A scenario, a character, an ability card for me? Well, all of my abilities are perfect, so... I think I need to make the game harder. So, new enemies for me to smash. That'd be good. That'd be great. Uh, right, what are you doing? You're gonna need heal. Probably gonna have to sit here and heal. Feel sorry for yourself. You're gonna do that. And I'm gonna do that, lovely. Okay, off you go. Uh, uh. Ah. Mm. Only a one ranged enemy. Interesting. All right. I'll bite. Perfect. Well, at least we got rid of that. Which I don't mind. Oh. That time over already. No, oh, I can't have that. No. I'll quickly do my turn. I want to throw a boulder. Yes, that's it. Yes. Aha. Right, great, right, now I can have it back. No. Oh. Not that Craig, Drithil. Not that Craig. The other Craig. The other Craig told me that they were supposed to be, or they were planning on drip feeding the. Drip feeding all of the new changes coming to the game this year. But it, time's getting on and it seems like maybe they're not doing that now. But that was what I was told. Um...
Or he's doing a ranged attack. Well, that's not great. <clears throat> How can you know? You've only seen one Craig. He does come in from time to time to say hello. But you're forgiven. What is the biggest change and why is it invisibility? Well, I don't think they are changing invisibility. I mean, they might. I don't think personally they should, though. Not because I think invisibility is... doesn't need a nerf. It's more that I just don't think it's... Like, I don't want them to mess too much with Gloomhaven. Like, they can improve the rules that don't make any sense. But I think the invisible rules kind of make sense. They're just a bit too strong. It's more about cleaning up some of the rules that are kind of a bit weird and awkward. Rather than, let's nerf the, you know, certain elements of the game or buff certain elements of the game too much. Like, the enhancement system was clearly a bit broken so they needed a bit of a fix bit of a tune up but apart from that i don't think anything else really needs it To avoid miscommunication, you should do as I name your Craig Steve. <laughs> that would be disrespectful to Craig, though. I mean, he has he did get the name first. If anything, I think we should contact Flaming Foul Craig and ask him to change his name. I think that's only respectful at this point. <clears throat> Which rules don't make sense? The jump to difficult terrain was a big one. That one is one that doesn't make any sense the advantage um disadvantage with the rolling modifiers which they're changing doesn't make sense push pull that you have to use the maximum amount of push and pull does not make sense um like just things like that like why do i have to use the maximum amount on a push and a pull it it just why can't I use the card for what the intended ability is to set other AoEs up? What it does is it just makes push really good because you just push things into traps and it makes pull pretty bad because you get less opportunities to pull than you do to push. So because you don't want to pull enemies close to you, so you take focus. So it would be a big buff to pull. Uh, well, I say a big buff. It will make pull a bit more usable, more in line with push being usable. The moment he's going to heal himself, I think. If I attack this, I think he's still going to heal himself. What is he? He's got four health. He's missing two. He's going to be missing three. If I attack this guy, he's going to be missing three also. Let's try and get him to heal this. result um okay Mm 
<laughs> You've been playing the game completely for months now. Completely wrong. The line of sight in some edge cases. Yeah, the line of sight's not too bad, but uh, that was a good one to change. Just because, again, line of sight was just a bit weird. I think you'll stick with the old summer movement since you play concentrated rage too many and hardly ever move yourself so it'd be so bad if the bear would just home back to you all the time it's not working like that yeah i think in digital it's bugged at the moment it's not giving you the option but it should i think the idea is that it will but at the moment it's not working that way yeah i agree the, the way it is at the moment is not good for that character yeah totally agree with that I'm trying to think what are some of the other I mean oh the loot the loot changes I don't think they should do the loot changes so in Frosthaven summoned enemies are going to drop loot and I don't think they want to change that in Gloomhaven because there are there's going to be a lot less summoning enemies in Frosthaven so it's gonna be less of an issue um so I think that was more of just a cleaning up of that rule for that particular game because it just didn't make much sense uh, but I don't think that's a good rule to put here because, you know, you've got right from the get-go, you've got cultists and you could sit literally just sit there and um, get loads and loads of gold. Like, and it could... You, you, you could, in theory, spiral out of control in terms of gold. It's, it's minor. Like, if people want to farm gold, they want to abuse game mechanics, there are plenty to abuse. So it always feels a little bit strange to be like, wow, well, you shouldn't do that because it's, it's too much. But... I don't know. That one for me, I don't think is really viable just because of that fact. There's just too many summoning enemies, uh, especially early on. I think the balance of the money and the economy might get a bit wonky. I don't think you want to necessarily do that. Um, so I, I wouldn't change that. I also wouldn't change the summoning rules where you cannot s summon into a gold pile. So in Frosthaven, gold is not going to count as occupying a hex. So you can summon on spaces where gold is so one of the best ways for example for defeating oozing grove is to try and get all of the gold out stop them from being able to summon like that's a big deal and uh, i don't think they should change that either because although that helps the players somewhat it also helps the enemy quite a lot more in my opinion so don't think they should change that either cordova thank you so much for the follow welcome to the quest hope you're doing well welcome in Lost Island springs to mind for farming gold. Exactly. Once you get that scenario, in theory, you can just keep running it to get as much gold as you want. And uh, there are definitely ways that you can abuse it. So, Do I have any curses in my deck? This might be a good time to try and get curses out of the deck. Or not. So, like, for example, I could have done, like, a disadvantaged ranged attack just to be kind of a little bit cheesy. Just to try and clear through my curses. Gold blocking summons definitely first go. Yeah. I mean, a lot of people, when that news came out, they were like, oh, awesome. Now I can summon on those powers. I'm like, that's not it. The, the, it's a secretly, that's like a power. That's a buff to enemies. That's actually bad for players. Because most of the time, you either summon enemies pretty early or you summon them, um, you know, at certain points and you can make sure that you're clear. The difference is, like, I guess the Bone Shaper summons so regularly that maybe it would have been a problem for that character in particular. And uh, the fact now that summons, are, there are lots of non-burn summons in Frosthaven, that also might be another nod as to why that's more important because players are going to want to summon more regularly. They might not plan all of their turns exclusively around summoning all the time. So I can see why they've done it. Um, but I actually feel like that could be quite a bad thing for players.
gonna be interesting for sure <clears throat> there will not be summoning monsters in frost haven no there is gonna be a few but there's gonna be less i i doubt you'll see anything like cultists i doubt you'll see like straight up regular cultists or if you do maybe they only have one card rather than two i also i doubt that you see i very i very strongly doubt that you will see something like night demons early invisibility as well or potentially wind demons early disarms maybe you will um or maybe they'll they'll get those at higher levels or something. I'd just say like the stuff might be tweaked a little bit. Because most the most annoying things that players have to deal with is most definitely invisibility, disarm, and summon. Those are the three things that enemies can do. That really just ruin your day and stop you from playing. So I kind of get the feeling that we might see some of those changed. But then it'll feel more impactful when you're playing against an enemy that actually has them. Hmm. So that's I saw my lava flow. Yeah, those for example. The thing is that they're not they're not very prevalent though. That's the only thing that, that I feel about those. Is that they're actually not particularly very prevalent. Really, it's just cultists. <laughs> really, it's just cultists. Stun is just fine. Well, the thing is, is that, yeah, we're not having as much stun. So they've got to take those things away, right? Oh, you mean stun on enemies? Well, stun on enemies is actually fine. I'm actually fine with the stuns on enemies because the only two stuns that enemies have is they have on spitting drakes and it's a really late initiative so you can dodge it or stun them if you needed to yourself or whatever it is you can just avoid it um or i think it's living spirits and they have to consume ice so it's again it's a more of a specific setup that could maybe be avoided or you could try and get away from with players having less access to stun that means that you won't be able to stop things like summoning abilities therefore there should be less of them like it if you if you think about like what would what would like some of the early scenarios in Gloomhaven look like if you had no stuns and just the cultist summon like two turns in a row. It's like, it makes it brutally hard for any player, no matter how experienced you are. So I, I feel like it's, it's a consideration to the fact they've had to take stuns out because stuns are too powerful universally, but stuns are the best and maybe the only real way to deal with those types of enemies. So they're, they're going to have to figure figure that out you know right let's see what happens when we walk on this should we it's just gonna open spinning drag stun is also not mo movement so easy to avoid yeah exactly so i i don't I don't think we're just going to get a lot of that stuff. So you're going to be able to play a bit more fair, if you like. Interesting. Hmm, I really wish I didn't get rid of that fearsome blade now. Just really realize that there's lots of traps in this room and there's stone golems in it. Ha. Huh. That's a little bit awkward. That's kind of fine. I got a hook gun, I suppose. Maybe I need to keep that now. That might be a keeper. I probably want to like net you to these or ink bomb these. I feel like I need to, to get these guys down quick.
an idea. Maybe Frosthaven is spammed with stun traps. Yeah. I mean, that wouldn't be a bad way of doing it. Because then what you're doing is you're limiting the number of stuns per scenario by just putting them on the board instead. And there are quite a few stun traps in Gloomhaven too. Or you just make this, like you make the stuns really, um, really difficult to set up so that they're quite rewarding for high level play, which is what I think they've done with like the Banner Spear, for example. The Banner Spear gets a good one, but that's like a very specific situation that you have to work out and you have to play the character well to do so, which I think is fine. But it also means that you won't be able to play it every turn. Which is kind of like another important thing. Um, I think maybe I have to get rid of Enhanced and Field here. It would be really nice to use this along with Reviving Shock. Flamethrower would also be something that we could get rid of here. Um, the Wound is is pretty good, but we have a lot of, of Wound ourselves anyway with Massive Boulder. So perhaps we shouldn't do this. kind of tough to see what we should get rid of here and what we shouldn't get rid of i it's probably enhancement field to flamethrower might be okay against a couple of these guys but probably not flamethrower is probably going to be pretty bad this scenario really for the rest of it i would think Whereas in Hearthstone's Field, it's always going to be an attack three, which I'm never going to turn down. Or could boost up Reviving Shock. So I, I think I'll get rid of Flamethrower here. Right, so now that we need to just rumbling advance into here, we'll get these guys... Um, potentially, we want to just Dirt Tornado a lot of them as well while we're at it. I have to be a bit careful about this XP, though. I, I've been gaining XP... I have been gaining XP. I think we need to stun the imp. Stunning the imp is definitely the play here. Uh, one, two, three. Oh, what? Did they spawn traps? What the hell? I don't have jump. What? Well, that would have been nice to have known about. I didn't even see that. I mean, I guess we could have hung around in that room and just waited for them to come through. Hmm. But we separate our team now, so that's not going to happen. I just assumed that we would be like going this way, but this is an unexpected twist. I might just have to take the damage and just move through. It's seven. That'll put me down to two. That's not great. But I could stun this. It's unlikely that I get attacked by anything else this turn. And then I could probably just heal up after like in one, like, one round or two. Okay, good. Golem's doing nothing. Scout's doing nothing. Imps. This one's also kind of annoying. Is this one going to have range? Most likely, yes. Not much I can really do about that, though. Um, one, two, three, four. One, two, three, four. I can't actually go onto that hex because I will get most likely targeted by the second imp. Wow, that was kind of brutal, those traps, huh? Got crushed first time when your character was standing there? Yeah, I can see that if you didn't know that, which I didn't, that could be really brutal. I mean, I've only just taken out feedback loop as well. I would have just put uh, feedback loop back in. For sure there. I'm kind of on a long rest though. I'm quite close. Maybe we just hold that for now. Why no jump on my theory? You always thought of it as almost mandatory. I'm just at a, I'm at a weird spot right now 
where I just don't have feedback loop. And uh, I, uh, I initially bought the plus movement boots. And now maybe I might want to make the switch. Like it's getting to that point where I need to kind of make the decision. Um... Uh, it's just going to remove the wound, though. Well, I could get him to only heal this, I guess, if I block this hex. Which is something. Maybe I should have moved here and sacrificed that to just do the stun there. Might have been better. Might use the boots to go there because it's going to be worth getting that extra point of damage here. <laughs> worth it to try and kill this shaman a bit quicker, I think. I brought us point there, but the scenario is not about killing. Well, I think you could you could make a run for it here. I don't feel particularly threatened by these guys, and the problem is as well on on this difficulty they have a lot of movement, so. It would be quite difficult for me to completely outrun everything. If they start if they start spawning every single turn, which I hope not, because there's no indication on the board that that's the case. Um, it says that they may happen unexpectedly, but as long as they don't like just come in every single turn, then I'm okay with that. Okay. So I think I know I want to just go for these guys. I can heaving swing here to just get rid of this one quite cleanly. Reviving shock here and here will give me a fairly decent set of attacks. Fade three, I'd have to draw well. I've got my goggles still, so I could do that. Rather than maybe waste the ink bomb or the, the net shooter here. Still got my piercing bow, which I'll try and get on these guys. This is just going to be a stun here and kind of hope, really. Okay. Wow, he's healing, which is a pain in the ass. They're doing target two again. All right, it's pretty bad. That means I'm going to have to get, get a card here to get rid of uh, off the Mind Thief, unfortunately. Well, we'll take that. But... That does mean I'm going to need to stamina potion back a card to potentially burn. Could use this to just kill a golem outright. That's a good heal. Oh, it's probably scurry, but I hate, I hate burning scurry. It's one of those cards where you're like, yeah, I just burn Scurry. It doesn't do that much. And then we really miss it. Well, let's find out what happens. Hey, Matuka. Finally caught a stream. Been looking at my YouTube for a while now. 
Don't expect to have friends to play this with, but we do play the physical every week with a full party. Love the content of Craig. Awesome, dude. Well, welcome to the live stream. Glad to have you here with us. Imps are drawing their evil 43 initiative a lot. Well, you know what it is. Gloomhaven's going to Gloomhaven, you know? <laughs> Unfortunately... Craig's going to get beaten up quite a bit here. Which I do not like. Um... Remove the poison versus heal here. We're going to get... I think I just have to go for me, don't I, really? I'm about to get poisoned. Well, actually, I'm going to get hit by two things. So that's... It's essentially saving two points of damage on me. Technically three. All right, that's a good one. Good start. Good start. Does Craig have the doll? He does. Is there any indication as to who has it? That would be one of those plus zero blesses. There doesn't seem to be any indication that I can see unless there's something... Like, how do you tell who has the doll? Like, at a glance. Kind of weird. That, that, I think there needs to be a... Uh, there needs to be, like, something, like, up here, maybe, on your portrait. Like, you'd have an, an active item or something. Definitely, definitely I was on Craig. Definitely. Weird. Kandar, thank you so much for the follow. I thought you were already followed. Well, thank you. Really appreciate it. Welcome to the quest. No indication. You couldn't find an indicator. They didn't put it in the inventory. No. I mean, it, we... It would be surprising if it was here. Well, maybe not because in the um, the Temple of the Light and Dark mission, right? Those quest specific items are, are here. So that is kind of odd. Very strange. Really need a long rest here. Don't really like it on low initiative though for where I am. So I'm going to have to kind of move, I guess, aggressively up here. I'm probably going to have to net shoot to these two to stop this stone golem from doing anything. Any shenanigans. And uh, maybe we'll do a move four here. Short rest on Craig and then try and deal with both of these. Not sure I can though. Really need like a target two here. Hmm, I don't really have anything. Yeah, this is um this is a very awkward round for us. I could net you to these two to help try and finish them off, depending on what these do. This does give me some nice flexibility. Playing both these together. 
Like if I really wanted to like go all in on trying to kill these, I guess I could ink bomb them. Maybe not the best idea, considering that we've just used our eagle eye goggles, so we don't have that. Like I don't really want to use a big attack without goggles at the moment because of the curses. Might be forced into it. Don't really have a lot to do with the crag heart, but I, I would like to long rest, but it's very difficult for me to do so. I could try and stun them with Warhammer. Um, or I stun one of them with Warhammer. But that also doesn't seem great right now. You know, massive boulder seems pretty good. I can't get any more experience points. I could forceful storm. I could just give give this one up. I know it's two perk points, but I'd rather win this scenario than not get get the perk points. You know. And forceful storm could disarm these two, which could be huge here. Then that allows me to maybe finish these guys off with like an ink bomb. Or a net shooter. Yeah, that's pretty good. That then buys me the long rest here. Okay, I think that's the turn. I need to short rest and forceful storm. I, I, ideally, I guess I want rumbling advance here. Or maybe earth and clod would be also fine. Sorry, to get back. I don't want to burn earth and clod or rumbling advance. Well, maybe I could burn earth and clod. All right, definitely do not want to do that. That's, that's a pretty bad loss. This is a good move. Um, make sure that I got my line of sight right. Yeah, we're all good. So I could rumbling advance, stay in one spot. To just do extra damage here while forceful storming these. That seems pretty good. Although, obviously, it would be much better against these guys. But if I... If I net shoot to here, then I have to move away, I suppose. One, two... Yeah, if I net you to there, I have to move away. We'll play it like that and we'll see how that how, how that all pans out. All right. 28. Move three. And that's an attack five. Okay, so... I think that means we have to switch now. I could just go invisible. One, two, three, four... Like there? Does that stop him? One, two, three. No. Four. One, two, three. Hmm. Don't really want to take an attack of five here on the crack cart. Could take it on my Tinkerer instead. But then I'm going to be taking damage from the Forest Imp. That might be the play though. Okay, so we do this. Very good. We are going to take the damage here. The big problem though is Forceful Storm doesn't really work anymore now. He's going to move to like, if I go to here, he'll just move to like there. That breaks up the formation, makes Forceful Storm a lot worse. So actually, I probably want to just go to here. Here. Let him come to the door. Then I can forceful storm over the top. Hey, Gwintom. How's it going? Yes, Sankara. <laughs> Yeah. MQ has lost the doll. No, I haven't lost the doll. I hope I haven't lost the doll. I have no idea if I've lost the doll or not. <laughs> it's not my fault. <laughs> Ugh. All right. Well, we felt that. Honestly, the Tankera being on three or two is pretty much the same. So I think we'll take the extra damage here.
We should be okay though for the next the next bit, I think. Like now we should be in a pretty good spot. I'm I am still very worried though. <laughs> We're just going to have to run out. The well is here, right? I just need to bring it there. I don't have to do an action there. Okay. Someone should still have it since they are up and running. Yeah. I mean, it's still... It's the crack heart. Craig's got it. I'm pretty sure of it. Don't want to be negative, but you cannot disregard the fact that it's round 16. I'm still in the first room. Hey. It's a really nice room, all right? Is Brain Leech the thing to get rid of here? I think it might be. So the idea here is that I need to heaving swing him into that. I could use the bottom of Crater and the top of Heaving Swing here. Would actually be a pretty good turn. Would do additional damage. Would actually kill this, right? Because we're looking at 10. This is 7. So 7. So it's down to 3. Crater will do 2. I would need to do 1 damage with my Heaving Swing. Oh, I don't hate it. I do not hate it. I do not hate it. Oh, devs are here. Everyone be on their best behavior. Can't break the game now. Hey, man, man. So I got two person campaign with your buddy. Who should you pick? Anyone but the crowd cart. You're playing two players. I would consider playing something like um, Brute Tinkerer, Brute Spellweaver, Brute anybody. <laughs> um, I think you should play the Brute. <laughs> One of you should play the Brute. Because <laughs> it's just... I think at any difficulty level, just having one person with a bit more health and the ability to sit, stand at the front and just take a couple of hits is invaluable. So, like, that one thing is really bad. Did he suggest somebody who isn't me? And also, why not? I don't understand why you would not want to play me. I am the best mercenary. It's very peculiar. I don't really understand that. Hmm. I am being horrible and attacking too. Well, that's not very good. Ow! Oh no, I'm immobilized! That's ruined my entire turn! You've got to be kidding. What?
Oh no! I don't even know what to do anymore. Well, I could do this and this, do this and this. Oh no! Well, I could do I could do it this way. That works. Yeah. Okay. Was that seven? Perfect. Well, I suppose that kind of worked. Although now I'm a bit nervous. I mean, I don't like that either, but... I've got to keep these locked down now. Uh, yeah, okay. Oh. Right, uh, I mean, I'll try and sort this out for him, but it's not looking great. Thank you, Menez, for the follow. Thank you for following me, Craig. I appreciate it. All oh, right, go here, do this. Who has the doll? Me, of course. Entrusted. Always entrusted. Guess I'll go get as close as I can. At least if I die, I'll get the doll nice and close, right? I hope. I hope. Right, before I leave, I need to plug. I need to plug the goal. We need to get 200 subs for me to be able to do a solo scenario. If you've got an a prime gaming sub, use it on the channel, and you guys can get me to play a full scenario playthrough. Choose the scenario as well. I'll even play that oozing bloody grove one if you want. I don't care. My full scenario. I need it for my Christmas fund. You know, I've got mouths to feed. I've got presents to buy. Right. Okay. I'm gonna long rest. I don't care what everybody else does. And then he can sort out the rest. There you go. Oh. You hear MQ's giving away loot today too? It is loot roll today. Great call, Oxy. Fire Lemming 488 gifted a tier one sub to Zeke there. <laughs> Thank you so much, Fire Lemming, for gifting. Really appreciate that. Welcome, Zach. Make sure to thank Fire Lemming. That's very, very kind of them. Or you can just chain redeem the 5k. Well, the, the chain redeem, it's got a cooldown on it. So you can't really get him for a whole scenario. Who is Craig buying presents for? All of his little Craiglings, of course. You know, he's a family man. <laughs> he's got his rocks. <laughs> we will be doing the loot roll today as well thank you for reminding me 
Um, Oxy, I forgot to put it in the title, but we'll be doing the loot roll today as well. Phantom Gorilla gifted a tier one sub to Vidyaz. There's the information for the loot roll if people want it, are interested. But every month, basically, if you're sub to the channel, we give away some keys. We do a, a big roll with the big die. I was out later today. How long is the cooldown on Craig? It's uh, I think it's like ten minutes. I think. I think it's ten. Let's go with ten. Um. I really need this to be a, a low initiative, don't I? I really need this to be a low initiative. I'm probably going to end up taking a hit here. Kind of regardless. I could short rest, but I'd really like to long rest and get the boots. But reviving shock is so good here. I guess I could stamina booster instead. Okay, if I do this and this, this gives me a bit of play. Because then I could do either or. Depending on what happens here. And then I could heal and then that might be okay. Alright, let's do that. 83. Although it's target all enemies, which is very bad. Very, very bad. Okay, good. I don't want to use my boots. So this is a good example of where I should probably just heal instead here. Because it's only an attack four. And then I don't want to move. We'll just stay put. That sounds good. Thank you, Phantom, as well, for gifting a sub. I really appreciate it, buddy. Vadiz. Welcome. It's very kind of you, dude. Thank you, thank you, thank you. Craig needs a CS to recharge. That's exactly. He's like, he's really good in like short condensed bursts. I'm trying to get him to do an entire scenario is going to be very interesting. He likes to come in, claim all the credit that he was the one who did it all. But say that he's the best character. He's always at it. But honestly, if he's forced to play an entire scenario, may find out how good Craig really is. So I have no clue what's through this door. No clue whatsoever. Could be anything. Um, should we long rest? Short rest? Ooh. It feels like I should short rest to just stun him or something. With perverse edge. I am very low on initiative now, though. I think I need to get the doll onto the tinkerer. Did you say that we can swap? So the doll could be passed from one mercenary to another by performing a loot action within range of whoever is holding the doll. So I need to do a loot two on my hook gun to get it? Because then I can just go invisible on that spot, right? Survive the round and probably win. Maybe. Let's hope. A well, hopefully. Ha ha. Very good.
Okay, so... This is a fairly important couple of turns, I think. Because we are getting a little bit low in terms of our um, cards here. Five. I could keep the mind's weakness up and it's not really going to affect my stamina right now. I could also just cranium overload him and forget about it. That's the other thing I could just short rest for. And just be like, do you know what? We're cool. Let's just carry on. That's probably what I should do. Because otherwise I'm going to waste at least one, maybe two turns here anyway. Yeah, let's just do that. And now we can just sort of like run to the end. I mean, this is pretty bad giving away our move five, but I mean, it's it's the way it's the way to do it, I think. We'll try and get as close as possible. Hey, Regent. How's it going? Good to see you. I mean, I, I'm... Really, I'm tempted to be doing this on the Tinkerer, but... I don't have many turns left. On either of these two. I guess I can just run in and take some damage. Am I long resting next turn? No. Not quite. I can't leave the loot behind. I'm too greedy. I'm going to presume that there's a load of enemies in this room. Like, it would be weird if there wasn't. <laughs> Let's be honest. It would be weird if there wasn't. So we could get rid of a few different cards here. I think probably Reviving Shock is the one to get rid of. Or Enhancement Field, actually. Yeah, Enhancement Field, actually, because the bottom of Reviving Shock could just heal us up for a bunch and keep us in the fight for one more round. Whereas I guess Enhancement Field is probably not going to do that. I've also got the bottom of stamina booster if I really wanted to use it. I, I don't think I do right now, though. I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to need a lot of health myself, I think. It's all on you, Tink. It's all on you. Now might be the time. I have no idea about layout. I can't get that. I mean, I could get that with you, right? One, two, three. So I, I guess I want to play Crater here to try and like just get in there. If I play Crater along with this, I burn this. I use this. I have one card to burn. I'm, I'm there. And the chances are, even if there's enemies in the first three hexes, I can get to the back three with Crater. So... I don't know the layout, but I would presume that's going to be okay. Knock, knock. 
I can also stun some enemies if I want to and just run in here. Which might be a good idea. I hope there isn't another part to this mission. I'll be mad if there is. Cool. And then we go kind of late here. Well, actually, maybe not so late. One, one two, three, four. Well, I'm exhausting on two mercenaries this turn, I think. Well, well, well. That's annoying. I mean, I could blow up the obstacle. Do I have any abilities to do that? I don't? Oh, no. Um. Big flips. Big flips! Woo! <laughs> no, that's a lot of damage! That's a lot of damage! We got it! We got it! When we needed it! <laughs> When we needed it. Oh, so good. My thief carries the party as always. Always, 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 always. Thank you so much for the Prime Gaming sub pouts. I really appreciate the support, buddy. Wow. I think you'll find that I actually got us to this point and I'm actually going to win us the scenario here. Nobody else. Me. Only me. It is me. Oh, thank you so much for the one bit. I mean, I don't know how much a bit is. But take that. You cast the doll into the well and return to the man who thanks you with coin. Yes, yeah, very good. Wow, we didn't do so well on that. But there you go. That's the true story. The true story. The true records. The stats do not lie. Mind thief. Mind thief carrying the scenario. Didn't do anything. Didn't do anything. Thank you, Ennis. I hope I said that right. Thank you so much for the Prime Gaming sub. Giving the doll to Craig, best decision. Of course, it naturally had to be me. Who else could it have been? Ah yes, the free, the tinkerer, the free XP. It's a shame they didn't put an XP on the stud shot, isn't it? Shame. What a shame. Ah. Perfect. You see? You're all worried. All worried. With me in charge, there's never anything to worry about. 
<laughs> a few days later, you hear that the daughter succumbed to her disease. And you are glad you didn't throw anything of value down the well yourself. Oh my god! Staz! Thank you so much! For five gifted subs! Oh my word! Cra Craig's! Craig's in chat! Craig, Craig's! Craig's in chat! Oh! That is very, very kind. Thank you so much. Welcome, Batman, Gautamouse, Outfox, Zoom Waffle, Sky Chronicler. Thank you, thank you, thank you. Scam Train, oh my word. What is that? What is one of those? That is very, very kind of you. Thank you, thank you so much. We are closer to our goal. Some legends. And all of you people are in this loot roll that he does as well. He does this loot roll. And what? All of that for nothing as well. What happened? Well, that was a bit. That's a bit sad. All of that. And nothing happened. He, well, he ain't getting a refund. Excellent. Right. <laughs> Not called Happy Haven. Well, yeah, I, I suppose, yeah. What did he really expect? Right, my time is over. Right, back to MQ. Wow. Thank you so much, Staz. I really appreciate it. That was very, very kind of you, sir. Thank you so much. That's very, very kind. Craig leveled up. Time for more rocks. It's level four time. It's level four. Maybe I should have let him level himself up. We all know what he was going to choose. Let's go rock slide. I mean, I actually don't mind kinetic assault. We'll probably end up going back for it. I generally do go back for kinetic assault because I just like a 19 initiative. Works well with forceful storm as well. And I like to play this card all the way up to pretty much max level. So having that, uh, turn that into an attack six, move one attack six with a pair of boots. Can make it a move three. Time for more rocks. Yes. Now, this is going to make our lives a lot easier. So much easier. We can get rid of Earth and Clod now. Oh, so much better. We need to try and get this up too so we can get an extra, um, an extra perk. Alexa, stop. What? She just tried to do the fart thing on her own. How did she get that from what I said? <laughs> just that one. <laughs> what? How did she get fart from what I said, chat? It's, le it's learning. <laughs> it's learning. Rolling wind. <laughs> I mean, although saying that, the crack heart, right? I should have known better. Naming crack heart cards around Alexa is obviously not a very smart move. <laughs> She's like preempting everything. Wow, that has never happened before. What? That is so weird. I kind of like want that to happen again now. <laughs> <In a weird way. laughs> 
Oh, no. I might have to start turning her off. <laughs> if she's going to be... If she's going to... 30 thoughts. I, I, I'm going to have to turn it off. <laughs> Bill Myers, thank you so much for the follow. Welcome to the quest. Hope you're doing well. Welcome in. Right. Um, city encounter chat. Let's do one. Your your time to shine. New poll. Which option are we going to go with? We are not doing an evil playthrough or a good playthrough particularly. We're just doing whatever kind of suits the situation and we feel good about. Uh, because we have the personal quests for both Sun and Eclipse. So we're not going to do that. So... You have free reign. You are attending to business in the sinking market where a frail white-haired woman approaches you and grabs you by the arm. Oh my, don't you look, 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 lot look strong, she says. Could you possibly assist me with a small problem I am having in my cellar? Her eyes grow narrow. Rats, so many rats. I don't know where they're coming from, but they are right nuisance. Ruined three jars of preserves just yesterday. She tugs weakly at your sleeve. Please, can you help me? Do we option one, decline to help the old woman, or option two, agree to help with the rat infestation? This is the this is the uh the meta joke event. My thief must be good with rats. Maybe. Or maybe killing her own kind would be a bit weird. Maybe she's in down for that. Option two. Agree to help with the rat infestation. Good choice. You smile broadly and ask the woman to lead you to her house. It is a ramshackle dwelling half sunk into the muddy foundation. And inside there are certainly a lot of rats. You kill as many as you can. But in a cellar you find a large hole leading to a section of sewer that recently collapsed. Leaving the pests with nowhere else to go. The woman thanks you for at least helping her to be able to sleep tonight and hands you a few coins. There you go, chat. That is the beginner's RPG quest complete. Two gold each. Nice. What happens if you pick the other? I don't think anything really happens if you pick the other. But it's like, it's the classic RPG quest, isn't it? It's like quest number one. Help somebody clear some rats out of a cellar. Nice. Nothing or minus reputation. Lose rep. Are you saying that you would lose rep for that? Because it kind of like feels like a task that's beneath you. Like at a certain point, it is beneath you. So in a way, it would be, I think like if you were, if you had a certain reputation, I feel like you shouldn't be able to take it. I don't know. that Because that would make a lot of sense. Like why would you want to do the starting, the start quest like that early on? Right, let's make sure we do some donations. See if we can get to... Oh, we're going to be close. We're going to be so close. I really wish I'd done this a little bit earlier. I was just being very greedy and hoarding my gold. I should have done it a little bit earlier, I think. Is there anything I want to buy here? I've got a spare small item slot. Now might be the time to switch over to the Boots of Striding. Sorry, the Wing Shoes. Get rid of the Boots of Striding, go to Wing Shoes instead. Does make Scurry a bit worse, though. Hmm. Maybe I'll leave it for now until we get one more level. Ring of Skulls is okay, but it's, it's kind of a waste of gold, really. It's never bad to go back to your roots and see where you came from. Ah, true. It just feels like at a certain point, you know, that, that quest is... Like, you know, in like a traditional RPG, right? You you level up, so the amount of XP that you would get would be like not worth your time. It should be kind of like that. And I guess two gold isn't really like much. Like when you're, when you're starting out, two gold could be enough to get you um, an item. And in fact, I did do that in my... In this playthrough, I think, we got that as our very first um, event. And actually helped us buy something right off the get-go that we wouldn't have been able to get otherwise. 
So we managed to get two items, I think, to go into Black Barrow straight away, which was nice. But I guess two golds after that point isn't a lot. The boost is striding okay. I just need the jump card on the Mind Thief. Well, if I switch back to Feedback Loop, I don't really know what I would get rid of. I guess it would be something like Empathetic Assault if I'm not planning on Enhancing Strengthen. I could do that. That gives me a couple of good things. Let's try this, see how we do. I do really like this card, though. Like, I just like having a disarm on the top. Like, like in that last scenario right there, it kind of helped us out. I mean, I think we were okay anyway, but it was quite nice to have. Nice to have a reliable bottom card that you want to play regularly. Nice to have the 79 initiative too. Yeah, it is, actually. Because we, we generally have the Mind's Weakness up pretty quick. And then we don't have a late initiative. So yeah, it is nice to have that. That is very true. So I think we just want to buy the Minor Healing Potion for Craig, right? On there. There you go. Um, Heal Craig. It's got to be a Power Potion now, right? Got to be. Could buy the wing shoes too. Why not? Okay, right. Next scenario. We could go... I don't want to do the Enox encampment. We could do... Forgotten Crypt... Is this the one that's Protect Hail, though? Oh. Escort missions on this difficulty are, like, terrible. They are so annoying. Any personal quests to progress? We we need to do side missions. Unfortunately, we've only got one. Like, I really want to try and get this one done. Um, Obviously, we'll, we'll just keep working towards this. This, we could maybe do more cultists. Which is why I've been eyeing up some of these ones. Kill all revealed enemies. Reach the treasure room. Hmm. Or we just go and do Plane of Elemental Power. Which is, which is the next one in the chain. Escort sounds spicy. Yeah. I mean, I could do it. We'll give it a go, but I, I have a horrible feeling about this one. We'll give it a go. You want to do what now? Hale stares at you blankly. You found a rift into the plane of elemental power and you want to close it. She sighs. Well, I did agree to help you. Hale begins tossing the orb you retrieved up and down in thought. Okay. Based on your description, it's going to take a little extra work to close a rift of that magnitude. I could do it myself, but it would take a while. And it may get troublesome if we were to be attacked by the other side in the middle of the incantation. Mm. It would be much easier to do if I had an elemental sensor, which really is entirely too convenient, because I've been wanting to get my hands on one for my studies anyway. I knew a powerful elementalist who owned one many years ago. He's dead now, but I'll take you to his crypt personally. I'd advise against handling the sensor on your own. Okay. You really don't like this one? You also think closing the rift is the boring quest branch? Yeah, maybe. But this isn't the way that I usually go. I'm kind of like, I would like to go a slightly different way in this playthrough than I usually would. Like, going to Plane of Elemental Power is the quickest way to progress the game to the end. But we are trying to play a few more scenarios here, I think. Fierce and Blade should come and go depending on traps and scenario. Yes, and that's one of the reasons why it would be great to have that overview, right, Professor, at the start? 
to know how many traps are in a scenario. Be quite nice. Okay, votes. Option one or option two, chat? Which one should we go with? So, you are headed through a mountainous region when the ground begins to shift and shake beneath you. Taken off your guard, you fall to your knees. The tremors continue unabated and grow stronger. You hear rumbling as rocks begin to tumble down the mountainside. Do we try to find a clearing where we can avoid the falling rocks? Take cover under a nearby outcropping and wait out the earthquake. So option one, try to find a clearing. Option two, to take cover under a nearby outcropping. What do we think? Traps and treasure area view would be also good for battle goals. Absolutely. I, I think it... I do think that there's that bits of information just would be so good to have. Like... I understand why they want to obscure some stuff to make it interesting and exciting. And so that people might, you know, not be able to perfectly plan. But there are some things that we just need to know, I think. So, everyone's gone pretty much unanimously for take cover under a nearby outcropping. You jump under an outcropping, but something is not right. Those among you turned to the elements, turn towards the face of the mountain and step into it as though the rocks were gone. Inside, you see an odd crystal jutting out of the earth. You snatch it up and the tremors stop. Ooh. After a day's journey, you find an ancient, overgrown mausoleum resting along the Serpent's Kiss River. Stonebreaker really was a nice fellow. Getting crushed by massive boulders is just one of the hazards of being an elementalist, though. After clearing away the overgrown... Bed, oh, he must be a friend of Craig. Into the crypt. Oh, great, Neil says. These blasted cultists are everywhere. <laughs> Resonant nowadays. crystal. It but should be. Sensor too, or they simply don't want you to have it. You look at Hale with confusion, and she points to the shadows where dark figures in black robes emerge. Okay, so battle goals. Have three or fewer total cards in your hand and discard at the end of the scenario. Very easily done. Gain seven or fewer experience points again. Let's go for this one because this is very easily done. We just... And this is going to be a very hard scenario. So chances are this is going to happen anyway. Um, Kill three or fewer. No, thank you. Loot a chest. There is one treasure chest. We just bought jump boots. Let's go for it. Um, Have one-on-one -on -one monsters present on the map at the beginning of every round kind of hard but maybe might happen use no items mm, no so let's go for that it's pretty possible with her actually rock side's gonna be super useful in this scenario too right really really useful is there anything else that i should bring it's going to be really, really useful. Don't think so. Could make an argument that backup ammunition shouldn't come in for this one. But I might just leave it for now. Got everything we need there. Got everything we need here. Yeah, I feel pretty good about that. There's a change coming for a marker of unlooted chest right. Yes, I believe it's already in the beta branch where it will show you if you didn't pick up the chest. So if you were to hover over it, it will tell you like that you've completed the scenario, but you didn't pick up a chest. You shouldn't have come here, ghost face, one of the cultists says. Ugh, hail sighs. Dispatch these simpletons quickly. I'm already bored with them. Right, so what she's going to do... Does she do anything? You gonna you gonna do anything? I mean I presume she she does.
I mean, I think we all know the plan here. There, there. Then we just fight. Okay, so we'll immobilize these two then. I guess we'll stun him with the stun shot. Makes sense. Jigtig, thank you so much for the follow. Welcome to the quest. Hope you're doing well. Welcome in. We need to kind of keep these guys in a formation here to stop Hale from doing anything stupid. What's she doing? Moving two. Presumably just towards the door. Like Redthorn. Don't 100% know that's true, though. Just kind of going to assume that's the case. So we could, I mean, Heaving Swing's looking really good generally. I'm, Heaving Swing's going to look great now we have Rock Slide. That's the problem with the, you really need that enhanced push two to get the ones that are actually like naturally in the scenario. But with the push one, you can actually make it work quite easily with Rock Slide. This is just a nice one to just sort of chill here and, and not do too much. You don't really need to do that much here. I just need to go and stun her, like, frigid apparition this, and then we're, we're pretty good. Don't need the invis or anything. Let's do this. <clears throat> Monster list was always known on the first page of the campaign book. But it used some sort of gloomhaven help, but that's a different story. Yeah, there's some things, right, that I think... Like, I used the gloomhaven helper app for setting up the campaign so that I didn't accidentally see any of the other rooms. Like, it's very easy to just sort of, as you're setting up, to glance your eyes over it. So that's why the app was quite good because it just stopped the temptation, stopped the ability for you to, to do that. Um, so I get why they've replicated that because that is kind of like what they've also now managed to do with the new Frosthaven book. They've managed to kind of make that, that work. But certain things do need to be there. And uh, like number of tiles or general tile layout I think would be fine like just to give you an image of what the makeup is doesn't necessarily have to tell you everything that's in there it could all just be grayed out so you know roughly how many hexes are what the entrance hexes are what the exit hexes are if there are any so just put that information in then you just need to put traps uh treasure tiles um that's really about it everything else can be hidden but that information, I think, is quite quite important. Also, I think that I wouldn't mind them moving some more information that you get, like, here, which is to do with, like, what the allies are doing, what the, the like, the big enemies are doing. I feel like they should move that information. If they can't fit it here, then maybe they should move that to some kind of tab that you can just click out up the top here, and you can get, like, more information and it's down to the players to use that or not. You could choose not to do this if you wanted to try and keep it a bit more secret for yourself, a bit harder. But you could just kind of click this and it comes out and it has all of that information just in here. Which then it's up to players whether or not they choose to use it. But, you know, the fact that you knew 
because you had to program the AI to do it helps you play the scenario a little bit. And the fact that players don't do that anymore, I don't think that means that you should just completely get rid of that information, which was why I created my tool spreadsheet. So I'll plug my tool spreadsheet again. But the reason why I made this sheet that has lots of different tabs on it that have good information on it for helping you play the game if you're playing digital because that information is just not there. So it's a quick reference guides for enemy abilities, scenarios, all of that kind of stuff. Some stuff in there is quite in depth that might spoil it for yourself, but they are quite clearly marked. Frost, Frost will have hidden enemies in later rooms. Yes, I think that they're trying to make it so that the book you can't open, you can't see future rooms with the, the way that the book is worked, I believe. Um, right, do this. So now, now the plan really is to attack the ones at the back because we want everything to die roughly at the same time. Oh, extra target. Well, I guess we're attacking all three things then. I just really awkwardly don't want to kill this guy at the front. I don't want him to stay put. You think it's going to list all of the enemies and overlay tiles? Yes, but it's not going to show you the positions, right? You're still going to have that list, yes. But they, but they do that in digital. In digital, you have a list of enemies inside the scenario. But it's not going to have... Um, like, you're not going to be able to see all of the positions in all of the rooms. That, that's going to be obscured. Oh, I, yeah, I think I think you're going to still get that component list, Drifil. Yeah, I think you still will. Right, well, really, I guess I want to try and kill all these guys with a nice backup ammunition or something. Then we just move on. Try and still keep it kind of a bit... sort of jammed. See what the enemy's doing, and we can decide whether or not it's a good idea to um, whether or not it's a great idea to open the door or not. If they're summoning, then it's a bad idea to open the door. Actually, no, hang on. I got to think about this. I need to kill Cultus with my Tinkerer, right? Actually, this is a great opportunity to try and make some some better progress towards my personal goal because we have to kill Cultus. We can get two right here really easily. Um. Ah. I could use the bottom of Toxic Bolt, I suppose. Maybe a bit early to be burning a card, but... I mean, if we get them both, then I guess it's worth it. Then we'll go a little bit late here. I'll still go for something like this here, but we'll go super late. Kind of a waste, but I'm just, I'm in a rush. 
No! Are you kidding me? What? Boo! Not cool. <gasps> what kind of luck was that? <sighs> Going to bed or watching the phone and let my soothing voice mutter you to sleep. I don't know how I feel about that. <laughs> I might just shout something. <laughs> just randomly start shouting. <laughs> um, I guess that we have a chance of doing some damage here. So we'll go for you. We'll newt him awake. Yeah, there you go. You guys can keep him awake. <laughs> All right, end my turn. There's a nice big obstacle there. Nope, still not going to move. I mean, this is perfect for me. We've actually, like by blocking everything up, we've actually just done a really good job of just stopping all of that rubbish. Do I have line of sight to that hex? I do not right now. So I guess I could do a restorative mist, ink bomb with a little jump. Get myself to there. That seems like a good idea. I really need to go super late here, don't I? With my boots and just try and get into this room. Get the mind's weakness going. Um... I could also heaving swing here, potentially. Also not bad. All right, I like, I like all of that. The jump boots paying for themselves already. No! You're kidding me! The one I needed to hit on! Damn it. I swear, this game. What is that about? Always the one. Not cool. <laughs> that is three damage I should not have had to take.
is that that that's the point where if you were playing the physical game you would just be like uh do you know what i actually meant to to, to draw that card for that guy not that guy yeah no like I, I i didn't draw them in the right order no 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 it's attacking that guy first yeah That's yep, totally what I meant to do. That makes Hale's route significantly shorter. Ah, she's fine. She's fine. She can't get there now anyway. She can't move because of these guys. She's still stuck. Wait. How is she not stuck? Does she have flying again? Is this one of these things where they have flying again? I, it was it was bugged with um, Redthorn for ages. Maybe it's the same thing. Like if the enemy's in a door, for some reason, she doesn't seem to care. I don't know why, but there's a weird thing where if, if an enemy's in a door, she can go through them. It was the same thing with Redthorn. It's a, it's a very odd thing. Well, that's unfortunate. That's not cool. If she can't see a path to the altar, she won't move. Yeah, well, she can't see... It. Yeah, basically, if there's no legal way with unlimited movement that she could get there, which at the moment there is not because... You can't go through this. So even if she had unlimited amounts of movement, she cannot move past this. So therefore, she should not move. So yeah, kind of a little bit frustrating there. You played this scenario completely wrong then and the other ones with escorts. It's not uncommon, to be honest. It's it's to do with like the fact that she's focusing an object rather than an enemy, which is kind of weird. In the way that the rules make it sound, it doesn't make you... It doesn't make you think that that's the way it should work. Because the rules are like, hey, they move towards the altar every single turn. And that's what you get into your brain and that's what you just do. But... Actually, there is a there is a point of focus, so therefore the focus rules still apply. But it's very, um, yeah, it's not not quite that clear, and uh, you would be making the scenario harder for yourself for sure by by not following the focus rules. You didn't know you couldn't block off all parts of the map. So you beat one of the escort missions by crack up blocking the guy in the first room. Yeah, that would be cheating. <laughs> <laughs> that would be cheating. So now she should move because there's a path, right? So she should she should go. It's good. Now you can also just do silly things. Like, for example, if I just move to here, she can only move one. Like, there are ways that you can slow her down just by doing stuff like that, right? Seven. 
So. You can even block here forever with two characters. Yeah, for sure. There's definitely um, stuff you can do to just mess, keep messing her up. Bit annoyed that I ended up missing this double stack, but... Okay. Hostile takeovers, probably not great in this scenario. We'll get rid of that. A lot of annoying ranged enemies we don't really care about. So again, I could just go here and then she's basically can't move. Which is, which is kind of nice. Um... Probably what I'll do. I want to keep that though. I guess maybe we'll just use this as a move too. Go there. I think I need to long rest here. Yeah? No, not yet. I think we managed to do the Mind Thief one so far, right? We have. We've had Aggressor. Could try and open here. It's a bit risky. But I quite like... I quite like continually opening. Because if we continue to open, it's only a small room too. If we continue to open, then it's more likely that she stops again. Because then there's going to be like something blocking this door or something like that, right? So it's actually a really good idea to just do, to just do that. Continually open doors just means that she can't move. She gets frustrated. Very nice. So now I definitely do want to because I did get that kill because now she could move to there, which is a little bit annoying. So let's open the door and see what we get. There is no rest among these cursed undead. As you kick through the door into the next room, you hear more commotion from the end. Oh, yeah, they come in behind us as well. I remember this one now. That's fine. That's not a... That sh Shouldn't be too much of a problem for us here, I don't think. Um, he's doing the weird kill thing. Okay. I think putting them somewhere to like where we could maybe heaving swing something is probably pretty good. So we'll put one there. Actually, before I do that. Actually, maybe I should just drop it right in front of me. That's probably the best play, actually. I drop it right in front of me. Makes more sense. Then we got the cultist blocking here. She can't move. Does mean that we have to be a little bit worried about her dying. To these guys at the back. Shouldn't be too much of a problem though. We're going to need a forceful storm unstable upheaval soon. How many rounds would I use in a vacuum? No enemies for one gold ply. On one gold pile. Um, with no enemies? I don't know. It depends on how much gold it is. I mean, if it's a big gold pile like this, then probably two. But otherwise, probably only one. I usually just do my looting pretty opportunistic. So if I see an opportunity where I can do something good and get loot at the same time, I go for it. 
But if my turn is just go get loot, then I usually seriously consider it, reconsider it, unless the scenario is already kind of won. I only really ever have turns where it's like go get loot when I know that I've won or whatever. But maybe up to two. I think Flamethrower is going to be pretty poor overall this scenario. Milking for gold is stupid because the game system would allow you to get infinite gold XP if you want to abuse it. Yeah, you, you can do. Especially with three spears. Three spears could just loot forever. So, another thing that I do is I don't pick up loads of loot too. Because one of the easy the ways to make the game easier for yourself is to buy items and enhancements and stuff like that. Like, they're a good thing to go get, of course, because it's part of the game. But they are big power spikes for your characters. So if you do like to make the game harder for yourself, really what you want to be trying to do is not get much loot at all. Because every little item that you get is just making the game easier. Because the game doesn't care how many items you have with your difficulty, right? Like, how many items that you have or how many enhancements you have does not play into the game scaling in any way. So that's why it's super impactful to get items and gold early because it's just immediate power spikes that the game doesn't counter. However, leveling up does get countered by the game. So when you level up, the game, the party level goes up eventually and then you, um, it gets more difficult. So if you do like to try and make the game hard for yourself, really you should be trying to get hardly any loot and trying to play with as little items as possible. No. Game's a lot less fun that way, but, but that is really what you should be trying to do. It would be cool if it did scale. Yeah, I think, I think it would be pretty cool. Well, I do have an opportunity to go back and get this now, so I think I'm going to take it. I know the hail is gonna hail is not gonna move here. If you want to min max, you shouldn't level tinker past level two. This is also also why the tinker is often played um, by us people who like to play at high levels as well. Is the tinker can level very slowly if you choose to not go for everything. Also just has good abilities, but yes, you could hold back the Tinkerer from leveling is another good way of doing it. <clears throat> also, what I know, um, I know Gripe has done this before and it's a pretty good strategy is to swap your Tinkerer out once the rest of your party starts to get a little bit higher. So, like, once your Tinkerer starts to level a little bit, like, now would be a, probably a pretty good opportunity for me to, like, swap the Tinkerer out so that when I get new characters in, so let's say I get two new characters, I actually then just go back to my low-level Tink. And then that kind of balances everything back out again and makes the game difficult again because I'll be playing on, like, plus difficulty. So, what you could do is, instead of having, like, you know, Tink at level four, you keep them at level two. Then when you retire everybody, they come in at level two and everyone's at level two. And then it's, uh, Kind of the same again, if you like. <clears throat> Is there anywhere I know which you can look which personal quests unlock the sun character? Yes. My tool spreadsheet. But 
you might spoil yourself on other characters. Depends on how you feel about that. But if you go to my tool spreadsheet, there is, if you go to the unlock mercenaries, there's the name of every personal quest. There is quite a lot that unlocks son. Well, that was a bit disappointing, but at least we got rid of that curse, I suppose. I have like one card left, right? I have Forceful Storm. I mean, I could just Explosive Punch this next turn. That's pretty good. I haven't actually used Explosive Punch once to actually blow anything up. <laughs> Maybe it'll be a good time to do it. I mean, there's a lot of enemies that could be killed here. All right, so this is a good opportunity to go pretty late here. And I can boost it up with Enhancement Field. Seems like a no-brainer to me. Summer Living Bones. Don't really care about that, to be honest. Obviously a little bit annoying, but... Could be way worse. It was maybe like overkill now <laughs> with the explosive fudge, but I want to do it. Craig hasn't managed to do this in a long time. Gets hail moving a little bit too. I might have to just stay here and hold this spot a little bit. Now, someone actually made things a little bit awkward because if I don't hold this spot and I go away, they'll go before Hale and Hale will get hit will, will get hit by one of these two characters, enemies. I don't really want that. So I do need to... If this dies, she will hopefully clear through. Depends on the initiative though because this guy could come down and block this spot again. I was planning on just long resting here, though. Maybe a little bit awkward. But I've got a nice double heal on the crack heart here. Might use my invis cloak. And then I can long rest next turn. And we still hold these guys off. Hail is the tank of the group. <laughs> well, she's the one with the most health right now. So you're not wrong, Phoenix. See, you're not wrong. I do feel like I need to get her moving a little bit, though, at this point. 
Once we open that door, even more enemies will come through again. I think they spawn here. So we do kind of need to be clear into this room. So our next door opening has to be a lot more tactical than it was last time. I think it was a, wasn't a bad decision to do it, but next time it has to be really on point for when we tried to do it. Uh, let's give it to the tornado, I guess. Yep, so now I can just like heaving swing him and rumbling advance. That should start to move her through a little bit more. Um, really, I can just do some damage here as well. And I'm long resting here. Okay. Summon living bones. That's fine. I don't think that's really going to affect anything. Okay. Kind of annoying. Miss missing again. Oh, there's a lot of attacks coming. Oh boy, there's a lot of attacks coming. That's a bit scary. Hey, Feldy. Failed the scenario last night because Hale got one-shotted by an elite living corpse in the last room. Wow. Wow. Yeah, that's not great. <laughs> yeah, that's not great. I think I'm going to need to eat some of this damage here on the Tink. I'm going to hook gun him towards me, I think. Wow. I'm glad I ate that there. Oh, some good flips. Oh, Tink got off light. You wanted to cry? I bet. That sounds awful, dude. Yeah, I mean, it's really frustrating. On, I mean, could you restart the round? Or were you playing, uh, were you playing multiplayer? Because that's the kind of thing where I'd be like, okay, man, especially at like the last room, I would consider restarting the round and just be like, Let's just position somebody there to take that hit. You're playing multiplayer? Ah, oh, yikes, dude. That sucks. Yeah, that's rough. She's coming. <clears throat> Not everyone is playing on easy mode with cheats. Some of us want a challenge. <laughs> sure. But I wouldn't be like, for me, that kind of thing. I, I'm not saying that I would always do it, but I'd, I would be totally fine if someone decided to do that. I think that would be reasonable. Because it kind of sucks. Gloomhaven's a cruel mistress. Absolutely. That's why we love and hate her at the same time. <laughs> okay. I feel like this is a pretty reasonable term. We have to be a little bit careful. We don't think too bad about this. Four ones. Like, I know that I'm going to have to, like, block these up a little bit. It's just who I stun. I mean, I guess I stun here. kind of aware that I need to start making making some movement here oh 
That's gonna block hail again. Uh, you also had horrible luck with the cultists spawning living bones multiple times in a row. That's... Yeah, I mean, like, that stuff just happens sometimes. And, uh... Like, I, you can deal with that kind of thing, right? But when you just get the one... Basically the worst thing, like, you take your eye off the ball for one turn and you lose it right at the end. That's really brutal. Oh, of course it's gonna move there. Probably get rid of hook gun. Yeah. It's either that or harmless contraption, but it is nice to have a little heal. Just to chuck, you know, to hail or somebody else. We're gonna need maybe more heals this scenario than usual. But also this is quite a nice little attack to just you know hit something where we're gonna be blocking lots of pathways. It's not gonna always gonna be easy to get range. So having a ranged attacks is just generally going to be very useful in this scenario just because of the fact that we're blocking up all of these different uh walkways we're probably not going to ever have the opportunity to walk up and melee something for two for example with the top default attack this is not really going to happen you cheat all the time in games makes it more fun in most cases single player only well, it's one of those things where, like, in the tabletop version, the chances are that people would fudge it. Like, most of the time, people would fudge it. Maybe not, but I, I just get, you know, you get that feeling that, especially if it's a a bolt out of the blue, like nothing, right? Like, there's you've you played really well up to that point. You've kept the character on, like, full health. You don't feel like you made any mistakes. It's different if maybe you had a compounding of mistakes, like that for me is it's like if you get one thing that happens that's really incredibly bad luck that makes you lose the scenario right at the very very end and if one thing was done differently even if it was just done differently from the sense that oh i went to this hex rather than this hex that would have been the difference then then sometimes it's like well you know like people would fudge that because ultimately all you're doing is maybe dragging the game out for yourself in some ways but if there was loads of compounding errors like you made you know you're like well actually you know i think i could have played better in that scenario anyway then you have to be honest with yourself and just be like Do you know what let's uh let's replay it but if you um if you honestly just got struck with something that was just terrible and if you made one minor little decision differently that would have done it right at the very end then yeah i don't really i i i don't blame people for wanting to just restart the round for that because it's super frustrating um okay probably this maybe throw it down like there i'm trying to block this room off so that when they all spawn in we can kind of ignore them hopefully or mostly at least This, for example, imagine this scenario if we, if they did change the um, the invis rules, right? We're talking about whether or not they might consider changing the invis rules to the new Frosthaven rules. I don't think this scenario would really... Well, it would be so bad, I think. It would be not very fun at all.
And we'll just keep this guy there. Is he doing a target two again? He is. And well, we can get this loot. <clears throat> yeah, you love fudge. <laughs> Me too. I love fudge. Or let someone change the card if you pick two bombs. Yeah, that was a super common one, I think. And it's so easy in digital to just make a misclick as well. And then you kind of, you, you make a, a small mental error because you have, you can't redo. That's, yeah. There can be a lot going on in Gloomhaven, especially if you're, um, you know, you take your eye off the ball for a minute and an enemy just isn't quite where you think it is or something like that. And you can you can easily be like oh i thought i counted the number of hexes correctly for like movement for example like something simple like that like if i do it all the time where i just look at the hexes and i'm like okay well i think i've got like the range like you count it out and you just miscount it by one just because you don't see something or maybe you don't see the hazardous terrain or difficult terrain for example so you just can't quite get there that's always a real pain Right, hail is going to cause me a bit of a problem now. There is no way that I can stop her from uh, not opening this door this turn, basically. That was maybe... That's, see, that's a good example there of where, like, ha, maybe I shouldn't have moved there. Maybe I should have just moved, like, somewhere here because then the enemy would have moved into a different location. But I think I think with the one enemy here, it's it's going to happen anyway, unfortunately. But this does put me in a position where I now need to open this door and pretty much go invisible. Hopefully block it all off. That was a that was a bad one to lose right there. That one hurt. That one hurt. Got to hope that we can get away from him here. That's the first shield and heal from the skeletons this whole game. First time you played this mission, she ran into the next door and got one-shotted on easy. <laughs> yeah. That can be a really big problem. Because if she opens the door, then all of the enemies in the room get to act. And I don't want them to act before her. That's like the big deal here. The big thing is that I think the enemies act after her. So... If she opens the door, like, the one thing you just cannot do in this scenario is let her open the door, basically. Like, it's just... Like, you let her open the door, and then suddenly they're all, like, gonna come at you. You know, she's gonna move into this room. That's kind of scary. If I don't go invis, she actually won't. Because this guy's gonna go to, like, here. This guy's gonna go to here. Hopefully, he may go to here, which I guess wouldn't make a difference. One, two. Yeah, it wouldn't make a difference. So I could heal myself for four here, try and tank two hits, then maybe go invis on the next turn. I expect those enemies have spawned now, right? Yeah, so those enemies have spawned. So I also have that, potentially, up my sleeve. Might be worth it, actually, to just try and save her. I could get rid of Harmless Contraption. That wouldn't be that bad. I'm going to do that. Then next turn, I go I go Invis and she just doesn't move. And then we just hold this door a little bit. 
That would have only been an attack 11. Pick two cards. They're pretty much dead. Mm -hmm. <laughs> Tanker at time. You're playing some games in time. What story are we doing now? We are doing uh, Forgotten Crypt, which is the an escort mission. So much fun. Really gonna need to crater these guys next turn, aren't I? I think. Well, maybe the turn after. Could be a good. Could be a good idea. Actually, I could stop them from attacking the Tinkerer here. Didn't think about this. If I do this here, then they can't get to him. Let's do that. Makes it super long. Oh, no, but then she's going to move there. No, I have to restart round. No. No, hang on. No, she won't. No, 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 they won't. They won't. Because there won't still be, won't be a route. No, I didn't need to restart there. That was fine. That was perfect. No, that was perfect. Let's, let's do all that again. That was great. Doesn't mean that I could change my card, but I won't because I feel like that's kind of scummy. <clears throat> hey, helicopter, you got a tricky question. You would love to have answered. Can a brute use hook and chain bottom move for zero and an attack? Or zero. Um, I think the problem is, is that it says, I don't think so. Because I believe the bottom of hook and chain says if you moved. Right? I think it might be very specific wording on the hook and chain card. But attack zeros are a thing. Yes, they are. They definitely are. But I, I, I have a feeling that there's something written on hook and chain. Which makes me feel like that is not the case. Because it says if you performed a move. Um, which you would not have performed a move. So therefore... You might not get it. Something like that. Maybe I'm thinking of a different card, though. Let me just quickly grab the card up. Um, root. Chain. Okay. All right. This is the card. So, I believe... Okay, so this is the one where it says it's in a straight line, right? Okay. Yeah. Yeah. Um, no, because you have to move a minimum of one hex, I believe, for it to account as movement in a straight line. For the same reason that a lot of people think that you can go backwards and forwards in one hex to get this up, right? So let's say the enemy was two hexes away. A lot of people go, I move forward one hex, move back one hex, move forward one hex. Do I get an attack three? No. Even though the movement was in a straight line, it has to be in one direction. So I would say no, because you didn't perform any movement in a straight line. So I would say no, you cannot. Does that make sense? Uh, 
I've cracked about back and forth for those different questions. Not really. I'm saying you're not making a forward movement. Therefore, you're not making a movement in a straight line. It's like the same reasoning, really. You didn't move. Yeah. So how, do, how could you have moved in a straight line? No, because you didn't go in a straight line. <laughs> a straight line would in indicate that you've had to have moved. The same reason why you can't go like, so you couldn't, for example, move to the side. Like, so you couldn't go like, okay, so this is a straight line, right? I couldn't go here, here, and then go, well, this was a straight line, or this was a straight line. Knock, knock. <clears throat> you also don't create an element if you move zero with a move plus element card, right? That is with yes that is correct um because you have to perform the part of the move in order to get the element generation the element generation is part of, of performing the action some part of an action must be performed for their effects to take place so for example you can just go backwards and forwards in one place like so i could go move here then move back that would create the element um, but I couldn't opt to stay in one place and create the element. Although when you play like the tabletop version, a lot of people would probably do that because it just kind of like, oh, just I arbitrary did this. But it's important when you're immobilized because it means you can't create the element. So for example, triangles it really sucks because you can't create the element when you really want to. Rock size your favorite card in the game currently. It's such a good card. It's one of the yeah. It's well, it's one of the best level fours in the game. Maybe. Third best level four. First best being a music note card. Second best being a lightning bolt card. Third best being rock slide. And this is another level four. I'm not thinking of. <laughs> You're sick of the stream hate on triangles. Hey, I'm not hating on him. I'm just saying that that's a thing that that triangle kind of that that character really suffers with, right? It's really obnoxious. Good, right. That all happened how it was supposed to. <laughs> I'm very happy that that all panned out exactly how it was supposed to. I'm pretty sure I have to go invis here on the mine thief, which kind of sucks. I'm going to have to short rest here. Just help out a little bit and then go super late next time. Oof, yeah, this. This can be scary. This can be very scary. Tink is the best level 4 card. Microbots. No. <laughs> so 
So like for example this, right? I have to I have to do the damage part of this in order to get this. Right? Well, part of doing this, I could use it as a default move too and not do this. But if I want to generate the element, I have to I have to do this. It's kind of sucks. I don't really want to I might just run away over here. I'm going to be hurt quite a bit, though, by uh, this living spirit, I think. Is he going to be able to get me? Nasty. Okay. Well, that's fine. We can do this. Brilliant. Really just this is the scariest enemy that we have right now. This living spirit could just kill Hale. <clears throat> also, can you do damage on that while immobilized? Yes. And that would generate the element. Because you did, you did part of it. You can totally not move and do damage with that card. Yeah, you use it as a default move too. <laughs> but no. You if you want the element, you have to do the damage. <sighs> yeah. That's what I meant, sorry. That's that wasn't clear. Um go late and stun this. I am kind of worried about her here. I was just going to long rest. While in this, it just makes more sense to. And then potentially one, two, three. One, two, three. What do I think is the ETA for Frosthaven given the current shipping situation? Um... I mean, I'd be hopeful that we'd get it maybe by Easter, but who knows at this point. I have no, uh, I have no additional information, you know, on Frosthaven at all. I'm like, just an, I'm an average backer Joe out here. Um, I don't have any extra information. Just sitting out here, waiting patiently, hoping to get my game. I'm surprised he's, this cultist hasn't died yet. I find that quite surprising. So he is going to attack her for four. That's kind of a bit of a problem. But I might just allow that here. Oh, it's a bit awkward that they're going now, right? I think I need to push them. I go here. One, two, three. Is that further away? Is that further away? It is. That might be That might be okay. I thought I put long rest on Tink. Did I not? I don't know why I didn't do that. I thought I did. What's the range on that? Five? Is there a line of sight of him? Might just be a good idea to do that. I definitely need to push one of these two into these traps though. I can't have Hail walking on that. That is a game over style scenario, really, if that happens. Take it. You never know what might happen there. 
I can't disable the traps otherwise. No. Or, I mean, I'll just have to walk into them, which is not really an ideal situation either. Yeah, so like now I'm like on a, a really weird turn here where I could potentially long rest. It wouldn't be that bad. This guy can't really get me. I could kind of long rest. This one's stunned. I'd be hit maybe by this, which could be bad. But really, it's not that bad. I've got one card to burn if it really happens. I also don't have much to gain, though, by resting here, do I? I also kind of need to go in and heaving swing and push this. I could go in with... I need to go in with Crater and push him into here. That would kill him. And she'd start moving. I can't remember exactly where the altar is. It's like there. Pretty sure it's pretty i'm pretty sure it's fairly central central back of this room the only other thing to do would be to try and stun shot this guy at some point to just try and get the wound on like the wound on this guy is going to be really really good hmm i could do with getting goggles back could do with getting this back Yeah, I mean, then I can go Invis next turn too. Honestly, I feel like this is the play. This is really weird, but I'm going to take one hit here, which is maybe, maybe that's worth doing something about because that is an attack of four on me on five and I have no card to burn. So if he does draw a plus one against me, then we could be in trouble. Maybe I short rest on crack and I just go for the push into this. And I just take the damage. Maybe I just go all out on uh on Craig. Sacrificial Craig. Shush. Alexa, stop. I'm gonna have to turn her off, chat. I don't even know what I'm not even going I'm not saying anything close to her name. Right, you're being turned off. She's a menace. That's what she did the first time you played this scenario. Death to the trap. Hmm. That is what I'm very concerned about. Well, if they drawn already, it could be initiative 21 on poison model. Yeah, I mean, they could do. The 21 immobilize. They've also got the do nothing, do a big attack, stand still. Stand still, do a big attack, uh, hurt themselves. They could do... There's a few different things they could do. I don't think they've actually... They've drawn move and attacks every single time so far. So they are due one of those cards. But it would be quite risky. If I was to burn two cards here, I mean, how bad is that, really? I still have five cards. I'm fairly close to the end. Risk it for a biscuit. Good risk. Perfect. No, I I think the long I think the discard mine's weakness long rest is pretty good here. Good just to have more people ready to go. I knew that this guy can't really hurt me too much.
now I can just make sure that I get the cards that I really want. A little bit spicy. So I really want clear the way, I think. I really don't want clear the way, sorry. I really want crater, heaving swing. Those are like the two big cards that I need here. Now my job with the Mind Thief is just to hold the back. So, realistically, I can get rid of feedback loop. Get rid of harmless contraption. So she doesn't move. But I only have five cards now. It doesn't really matter. I'm playing this more for the initiative, right? I need 75 initiative at certain points. Because I'm going invis looping, I need to have late initiatives. So it's all just about that now. Like, I'm not counting, like, exactly how many cards to have in my hand, like, to try and maximize that part of it anymore. I'm doing it because I need to have 75 initiative in my hand. Like, especially if I was getting rid of feedback loop. So it's... It's more of just a case of now I know I need to go early. Like, I can just hit him. Like, just hit him for this, for example. It doesn't really make a difference. Because I don't care about stunning them anymore, really. Apart from this one guy. So, like, I could, for example... Well, to be honest, on this turn, it's probably better for me to perverse edge and just hit this guy and, and hopefully kill him. Uh, then next turn, I go like this and this. Or I do this and... Yeah, this and this. I suppose it doesn't really matter, actually, with the with the way I'm going to sequence this. Yeah, I guess it actually doesn't really matter with the way I'm going to sequence this. Because I'm going to do this into this. Then next turn, I'm probably just going to do this into something like this. Yeah, it might, it might not matter, actually. I know I'm going to have to probably stun shot one guy. Okay, what are you doing? 71. Okay, that's fine. We know we just need to keep holding this guy down. Probably should have done my, uh, my attack first. Definitely should have done my attack first. Um... What's he doing? Attack three. All right. Well, I guess we just have to kind of hope on that one. All right. He is now sort of sorted, really. I guess I could drop back a little bit here. That might be okay. Let's drop back and heal here. <clears throat> Theorizing Brute makes you go wild places. Can you use Rings of Haste and Brutally in the same turn? Uh, yeah, yeah, yeah. You can use both those items in the same turn. Yeah. Oh, boy. Maybe I should have just poisoned him there. Nice. Okay, come on then, Hail. But you can't refresh them and use them both a second time in a single turn. Uh...
I think it specifically says. Ah, does it specifically say? It says at the end of this turn, right? Take uh, the play at the end of this turn. I guess you could. I mean, I don't see why not. Initially, I don't think there's a problem with that. Two minis on this scenario is so nice with that one switch places card. Oh, yeah, that would be sick, actually. There's a couple of scenarios that that just breaks it, right? Yeah, I can see that on this one. All right, hail, fully healed. How many balanced measures you can attack with in the same turn? Bottom plus phalanx, you mean? Oh, like a bunch. Yeah, it's a really good way of breaking the character. Really good way of breaking the character. Um... Try and delay her a little bit. Gives me a couple more turns. You have to be very careful about just exhausting here, though. I'm very careful about it. So I can long rest here because I've still got one more turn. Which is nice. Um, I will probably just keep moving here. Like, this is definitely the long rest here. Um, so that would give me... I'll give you four cards. Give it. Give me three. Give me four. Yeah. That gives me the. That gives me the full turn. Let's try and hide around a corner a little bit. <laughs> Done pretty well with gold. There's going to be a chest in this last room as well that I'm going to need to get. Not looking forward to that. We'll walk into a trap? No, she won't. Because there's a because there's a legal path of movement. Because there's a legal path not through a trap, which would be through crack, then uh she will not. Well at least she shouldn't. If she does, <laughs> we're gonna kick it off. Um so honestly, it's probably just run into the room and forceful storm. We try and buy as much time as possible. The problem is, is that if if there's lots of enemies in here, there's not much I can really like do about that. I'm kind of concerned about that right now. I think I have to get rid of heaving swing. You know, things are looking a bit scary right now, chat. We are we are very close to either winning or losing. <laughs> I feel like we played this scenario pretty well so far, though. I'm very happy with the way I've played it. So we've got a couple of options. I could run in, I could rock slide, which could potentially buy me some, like it, I could create some separation. However, what might also happen 
is I might make it difficult for Hale to get to the altar. That's the other thing. So I have to be really careful here with how I try and kind of go about this, really. I mean, I'm in a good position to just be able to do this and this. Right? Then we'll do a big... We'll do a couple of big attacks. Hopefully, we'll get a couple of plus ones. I can poison dagger the first attack. So I could, for example, do this. And I could do a strengthened poison dagger attack against this. That will probably kill it. So that's that's probably the way I'll go with that. I mean, I have to kind of short rest here. I don't have much option. I could stamina booster. Try and get... Ooh, I could stamina booster. Yes. And I could get unstable upheaval back. And then we have one big unstable upheaval. Stun the whole room. Hale gets to the altar. She needs one, two. One, two, one, two. So maybe we need like three turns more. Two, one, two, one, two. I think it's there, or it's like there. But I don't know where the enemies are. This is tough. I'm on one health, though. It's never, never nice to short rest on one health. I got a lot of cards, though. But that could buy me so much time. Just throwing Alter into her work in digital? I don't think so, because I think it says it's immune. I could bait, th bait them out of the way, stand in a corner and try and seduce them away from the Alter. Yeah, that's not a bad idea. I mean, I've got like a move six, right? So I could go... <laughs> if it's all straight. I think I'll probably move four, though. Stamina booster, get unstable upheaval back. Then we go for a big unstable upheaval. That will buy her time. That will buy her at least one round, which could be enough. But I have to do it now. I don't like, I don't love that. But I also can work with that. Okay, so we'll do this with the Poison Blade to get the strength from first. We have had to get some serious value out of uh, Mind Thief. Right, plus one. Come on. Yeah, we go. So... Kind of risky. But if this works, we'll look like a genius, chat. Can you use stamina pots after Ring of Haste too? Yes. Because you can use them at any point during your turn. All right. <gasps> Look. Mm. Okay. Ooh. Okay. Okay. Right. What's the closest way for her? One, two. Like one, two. Or one, two, one, two. She can get that pretty quick. These guys are summoning living bones, though. That's a problem. I could stop them from summoning living bones, right? Quite easily, actually. So if I go here, this guy's going to go to here... This guy's going to go, like, up to here. That will open up this hex. 
for hail. But there will only be one hex for hail. Because I'm going to need to rock slide this and this. And probably this back here. If I, however, go to like here. This guy's going to come here. This guy's... Uh, this guy's going to come here. This guy's going to go here or here. That opens up one, two... Two hexes at the front. It opens... It's the same rock slide possibilities. To stop the spawn. One, two, three, four. So I think that's what I do. I go here and we go... I need this hex here though, right? I can't get... The, I mean, if it summons back here, do I really care? I, I'll have two open hexes at the front. Hmm. It's really close. Oh, yeah. Like, the Brute... If you time everything right, the Brute has probably got some of the most ridiculous damage in the game. But it's all very... Like, compared to other characters, it's all, like... Single attacks. But it's, it's pretty nuts. Very fun way to try and kill some bosses i'm invited on a television show with conan o'brien i have five minutes to explain gloomhaven and make it sound as fun as possible do i stand a chance yeah i think so i don't even need like i wouldn't need five minutes i mean it's You'd have to be... You'd have to have the right kind of audience. Okay, so I'll, I'll get a spawn there. Oh, here's the other question. If I'm unstable upheavaling next turn... Actually, do I want to be like here... Because I'm within range of everything. Right? This is really close, really tight decision making right now. This is really, really difficult, chat. Really, really difficult. Preventing the summon is one less thing to worry about. It is, yes. But if I'm planning on stunning everything, it might not matter. Well, the thing is that I could, I could potentially give myself an extra open hex on the altar, but maybe that's not the right play. All right, I'm going to go with my gut initially. And let's see how this this goes. Like this is this is my gut kind of play, really. This obstacle cannot be destroyed or moved by abilities. There you go, there's your answer. <laughs> then this spawns behind. Then that means it's going to go this way and target hail, which is not necessarily what I want. I think I'd much rather have it next to me. I'm going to have to play like super aggressively in this next 
little few segments, I think. Yeah, I've got unstable upheaval next turn. Which is nice, but it's not necessarily... Like, I'm, I'm going to be one turn out off, right? Because I need one more turn afterwards. I forgot about these guys, too. Good job we got the Mind Thief just chilling here. And people say Iron Helm is a waste of time. <laughs> ah, people try and tell me that Iron Helm's not a good item. Now, there's still going to be this guy, which means I'm going to have to probably pretty aggressively run in with the Tink, right? This is Tink, stun shot, in. Oh, I can't reach. Oh, no. It might, it might not matter. It might not matter. Oh, boy. Then we have to restorative miss stun shot next turn. Oh, man. To be fair, I could Forceful Storm top next turn. Perfect. It's going to move to there now. Yes. One, two, three. One, two, three. Perfect. Now Hale's got a clear... Like a clear approach. <laughs> Here we go. <sighs> Perfect. Like exactly what I needed there. I mean, just in case, we never know, right? Oh, she didn't even go next to him as well. See, this is one of those times when... If... If she had gone there instead could make the difference in this particular scenario. It's why controlling those like ambiguous moments, you know, people get annoyed about it. This is why. Because this, that could have been a moment right there. So the reason why the reason why we want to show up here is we honestly just want to to maybe soak an attack or two. I mean we can check to see what their initiatives are. This is two. So if we're still alive, this guy's actually going to come back. 
which may again make a, a small minor difference in this scenario so that's what we'll do um this guy is gonna act before all of these guys so that's that's gonna pull him back this way I could do my best damage impression on this too. So I got one card to discard to damage. Maybe keep one guy out of trouble. Feels worth it. So we short rest. And I think we want to get rid of rock slide here. Ideally we want forceful storm here. Okay. A, a bit annoying because of the initiative. But I don't know if we can risk it or not. Maybe we can risk it. If we don't have it, what does it matter? I could, in theory, try and box them out here, right? I mean, I'm going to take the damage anyway. Could I wall off a path for hail with rock slide? Unfortunately not. Because she's going to... I mean, I could go like here and here. But then all it's going to take is for one of these enemies to be like, oh, cool. But that's not... That shouldn't happen. That shouldn't happen. I'm just trying to think like what's worse here. I guess they have quite an early initiative that attacks for a lot. Which would be annoying. But I don't, I don't see it being that bad. I think I can burn this. I think 53 is probably going to be okay. Do corpses have immobilized enemies within range 2? No. But they do have muddle all adjacents or something. Immobilize all adjacents on like 21. They have, like, move, muddle, or adjacents, which shouldn't affect me here. So if I do get rid of Forceful Storm, what does that mean? Well, that means that I'm playing Rumbling Advance Bottom and I'm playing Rock Slide Top, realistically. And what does that do? Well, I could place a rock here which might protect hail a little bit. I could maybe place a rock somewhere else. I'm planning on stunning one of these guys anyway. I've done it. I don't think I don't think it's going to matter that much. I honestly don't think it's going to matter that much. There you go. Good. Perfect. That is what we wanted. So do I just, do I go for a times two draw here on this guy? So attack him for one, get the strength done. I don't think that does it either. No, I don't think it does. I think I need, two, I, need I think I need, two, I think I need two good pulls regardless, so. Mind Thief just running pure interference here. Go for the XP? No, because I want to... Um, Actually, I could have there. I could have there, yeah. Actually, you're right. I didn't check these guys. I just kind of assumed that I wouldn't have to deal with them, which I don't. But, um... It's all good. Yeah, I could have done. I didn't check their initiative. It's fine. I was too hyper-focused on this room. Okay, so... In terms of stunning... Realistically, I should do this because then I can just forceful storm these two. May as well give my advantage. <laughs> it's the ultra destructible obstacle it says specifically that it isn't but i'm pretty sure that that was not the case in physical 
I, I remember this scenario and I'm pretty sure my friend who was playing the crack car did throw it. And I remember at the time thinking, is that allowed? But I don't think we saw anything to say otherwise. I can't remember. I think we just allowed it. That came close. This scenario came close, yes. chat. Was it last turn, pretty much? Maybe the last two turns, max? You pushed an enemy into it before that restriction was in place with Craig and Hale just stood on that spot, but never triggered the victory condition. Well, that's one way to lose a scenario in style. I like it. I do like your style, sir. <laughs> 10 out of 10 style points. Hale moves forward and grabs Come on. The she holds it aloft and speaks a few words <laughs> in an unknown language. Fire bursts forth and immolates the remaining undead, reducing them to ash. Ooh. Hale breaks the smallest of smiles. Well... Now that that annoyance has been dealt with, let's get on with the real fun. Show me to this rift of yours. Oh. 120 damage. Wow. I have to say I'm quite surprised. I did not really think we could do that scenario on Deadly. You know, there's just a couple of scenarios in the game that are just like, oh, this is such a pain. The, I don't know if you could do it or not, but there you go. First try, too. Nafzib, thank you so much for the follow. Welcome to the quest. Hope you're doing well. One damage short of 50%. <laughs> no, that's a lot of damage. And Sim Lost, thank you as well. So much for the follows. Welcome, guys. Hope you're both doing great. Having a great day. Nice. We didn't get this though. Like this, this was, this would have been maybe possible if we had a little bit more movement, but we ended up getting rid of all of our movement cards. I'm pretty happy that we did this though. Like the fact that we, I mean, this is one of, one of the easiest ones to do. You just burn a load of cards at the end. Like it's not that hard. This one though, we had, this was the right scenario for this. Definitely. Definitely the right scenario for this because you kind of want this anyway. Yeah. Craig dominated. Although the Mind Thief played an amazing role in that. That's like Mind Thief unsung hero of that scenario, really. Just hanging at the back, blocking the enemies forever. They just never they never really moved. Nice. Very happy with that. You unfortunately had to redo the scenario because it wasn't the last round either. Oof. Yikes. Plus one prosperity. Wealth two. Oh. This is what we want. Very cool. Staz. Oh my god, dude. Another five gifted subs. You're too kind, sir. That is so kind of you. Thank you, thank you, thank you. That means so much. Thank you, dude. That's incredible. Welcome to the quest. Vandalake, Niles Apprentice, Drake, Snowy, Krovax. Please make sure to thank Stas in chat. That is incredibly kind of them. Crackhearts in chat. Guards in chat. Christmas Craig. A normal Craig. <laughs> That's awesome, dude. Thank you, thank you. Ruinous Rift. Ooh. Ah, we did okay with that, too. I mean, we weren't specifically trying really hard on that, but we tried it. Knock, knock. 
Uh, newt, newt. Have I been missing the newts? I feel like I probably missed a couple. There we go. I'll get at least one more. <clears throat> Good night, Mutaka. Thanks for stopping by, buddy. Good to see you. I will be uploading this onto YouTube, so this is part of the YouTube series. It will probably be up in... It might be better if you want to watch the VOD, if you want to just kind of catch up on the last bit, because it will take me a few days to get it up on YouTube. Uploading like a four-hour video onto YouTube, it basically just look at you like, uh, do you know what you're doing? <laughs> and it takes like, it takes like several hours to render. Then it takes several hours to upload. Then it takes like hours and hours for them to actually process it. It's quite a long process to upload a long video on YouTube. Funnily enough. Right. Level up on Tink. Not that I really want to, but it is what it is. Dangerous contraption. Microbots, great. We get a move four. We get a move four. Oh, what what did Craig get? He got rock slide. Huh? What do we get? We got a move four. <laughs> uh. So Microbots is just a terrible card. <laughs> it's just so bad. And it's it's unfortunate, really. Even two enhancement dots couldn't say that. <laughs> I said I needed more movement. That is true. We did fall a little bit flat on movement, didn't we? That's because we burned Crankbow pretty early, that scenario. When, once Crankbow was gone, then uh, it did become harder. Honestly, at this point, like, it is whether or not you take a move four. You could, in theory, take Tinkerer's Tools because in certain scenarios, Tinkerer's Tools could be useful. You know, that, for example, in that scenario, that would have given me another option over the Heaving Swing. Although the Heaving Swing was obviously the best thing to do there because we killed the enemy as well. So it's never nice to just disarm a trap when you could just push an enemy into it and that's always going to be better. So... It's why disarming traps is not really a great thing in the game because, well, just push the enemy into the trap. Don't worry about it. And uh, sometimes they can be useful, but often not. Apart from maybe just getting lots of XP, this is kind of a good way to farm XP. But aside from that, it's not great. And the bottom of this is we've tried it out, but it's very hard to do. The only good thing about this is it does combo immediately with hook gun. So you can go stun trap, hook gun, and you've got stun. But it's kind of a lot to give up. And you have to have the right kind of positioning for it. I don't mind it, though. Um, the other card we could consider taking is Disorienting Flash. Another bad card, really, um, in my opinion. I don't like burn stuns because all they do is generally kind of buy you a turn and then you've got the same problem the next turn. I mean, reoccurring stuns are great because you can just kind of keep them going. But this doesn't even do any damage. And because it doesn't even do any damage, it just feels a bit bad because you kind of just stun things. And then it's like, okay, now what? Um, but I have found that in certain situations, it can be quite useful when you do just need a turn. Like, for example, that last round there with Hail, if we had Disorienting Flash at that point, we could have just run in, maybe stun two things. Hail can go and do the altar. Like, so there are situations where it can actually work out quite well. But it, it's generally bad value, but it, it can be used. Um, so really most of the time people go for dangerous contraption just because it's a move four and actually the summon is not terrible when you're playing like normal difficulty or even plus one like I feel like you could probably play the summon and get yourself two XP and you're not going to be that sad about it it's kind of a bit of an upgrade if people have been playing like hardness contraption it's, it's like just basically a strict upgrade really in that respect like you just want something that can now do a little bit of damage too so most of the time i would recommend going for dangerous contraption i think it's close i think it's very close here for us what we go for i don't really like many of these cards or any of these cards really how much to enhance the target on the stun that's a good point actually because it's a level two card 
Um, the plus target is probably actually within our reach. That does make it slightly better. If we could stun three things at range three. Hmm. The problem is the bottom doesn't really do anything as well. So that's the other part. Like if you're going to carry a card like this in your hand, you've also got to be thinking, okay, well, does the other half of the card do enough to then warrant us having the card, you know, for a while? And it's 73 initiative. So that's bad for a stun to begin with, right? So we would need to pair this with something else anyway. We couldn't play Disorienting Flash. It was very unlikely that we would want to play Disorienting Flash on 73. We're probably going to want to play it on early initiative. So th that's the initiative doesn't win it out because sometimes you can just have low initiatives and they're good just because they're low initiatives. The model um, target all adjacent enemies and move away again is just not particularly great. Models like the weakest control effect you can get. So that doesn't really do anything. So essentially, this is a 73 initiative move two most of the time. And that is not great. And that's a bit of a problem. 125 to enhance target. Is that with the new costs, though? Is that with the new costs, though? Because the new costs, like, are... Uh, Quite substantially reduced. So I can, actually, if I use, if we go to my tool spreadsheet, it should be able to work it out. Um, from the tool sheet, we should be able to work it out. Go to enhancement costs. Um, so cost per level is now 10. So it's basically an additional 10. Plus range, uh, sorry, plus target is 40. So that's 50. It's only 50 gold, right? It's only 50 gold. Unless I'm... Is it... It's Because it's not an extra attack hex. Oh no, per existing... Or is it something to do with this? Prices to Cali is 20 to 50 gold divided by the number of hexes currently targeted. Does that still does that still happen? 40 times 2 plus 10. Oh, because is it the existing um Is it because of the existing targets? Do we have any big moves that we actually love to play as a move? Stunshot is actually more of a top card, isn't it? Ink Bomb, maybe, but not too many. Yeah, that's that's Crankbow, really. That's what Crankbow's for. Like, Crankbow is... Crankbow becomes your default move for, really. And then, but generally speaking, you have some good moves, but they're on cards that you might want to burn. So, like, you have Net Shooter, which is, like, an okay kind of little move. It's actually not a bad little bit of controller bomb here, but you're probably going to be using this for the, the top. You have Ink Bomb, as you said, like that is generally going to be a move for for a while, but then eventually you're going to have a good opportunity, so you lose it. So really, you want to keep one of the move fours. So generally, that would be Crankbow. But again, sometimes you have a good opportunity to use Crankbow. If not, then like Dangerous Contraption, you pretty much never want to play the top of Dangerous Contraption. So it does just become a move four. And then you don't have to worry about that so much. So that is nice. Because your move fours are on cards that you probably will burn, um, you know, situationally in the scenario. Maybe early. I mean, we actually burned Crankbow really early there because we had an opportunity to do some damage to a living spirit. Um, but we might not necessarily have always done that. <clears throat> Double base costs for targeting multiples. Ah, that will be it. 90 gold for multi-target stun is crazy for new rules. Can you get move tar uh, Can you get more targets on the note character? You can get extra hexes on the note character. I don't know if you can upgrade the bottom of captivating performance. That will be a lot of money anyway. Like the bottom of captivating performance. And maybe you can enhance that. But all of the other stuns are area of effects. Which you can increase the, the, uh, the, the extra 
hex, but that's already quite expensive because it's a AoE based. They kind of like the AoE based ones are already kind of expensive because it's an extra hex. We could, I think, I think realistically, dan uh, dangerous contraption is the correct pick because it's just the safe pick that we can use as a as a move for, and we don't have to really worry about it anymore. And we can get rid of harmless contraption, which is quite nice to just have a little heal here or there. But honestly, it's probably pretty forgettable. Hook gun is another card that's very kind of like on the chopping block, really, because it doesn't do a lot. But sometimes a pull can be useful, as we saw in that scenario. Sometimes a pull can actually be quite useful. Also, a loop two. Might be doable. Didn't extra hexes get cut in price too? They did, but they're still quite expensive, right? Um, well, actually, no. They went down by 25%, which is pretty reasonable. Actually, no. That's a, that's less than, on average, most others. That's actually below average in terms of the cut prices. So it's 150. It's 50 gold less, which is a lot. Don't get me wrong, but it's not um, like as much as some of them. Like, some of them went down as much as, like, 60%. Would I consider microbots if it had initiative of, like, four? Yeah, absolutely. 100%. It would still be a bad... Two bad burns. But, yeah, I think so. Because then at least you knew you could go first. Going first in Gloomhaven is a big, big deal. Real big deal. And because stun shot is, like, 20... Which is an okay initiative. Like, it beats most enemies. But it doesn't beat, like, Night Demons. Doesn't beat Wind Demons. So there are certain things that you just would love to be able to go really early on. I mean... Four would not be earlier than... Some cut, some enemies. Like, you would need it to be, like, lower than that. But I, I also don't think that would be very good card design, though. You wouldn't want people to take a card purely for the initiative... There's got to be other redeeming features about the card. Like, that can make a big di make big difference in your decision-making process. But I don't think it's ever good to say to a player, okay, at this level, you take this card because it's a low initiative and you're going to use it as a default move too forever. Like, that, that's not, like, a good basis for the game, right? You want to be playing a top and a bottom action. Like, the default actions are there more to, you know, just give you a few more options every turn so you don't get yourself maybe penned in too much. You've always got some basic actions available to you just in case things do go badly. But they're not like... Like, they're not really like what the game's about. Which is why I think like, for example, I don't like Balanced Blade. I don't like Serene Sandals. I don't like those items um, because they just encourage boredom. They encourage playing the game in a boring way, which I don't like. So I, I rarely play with those items. <clears throat> if gloomhaven digital had a mode where you could completely craft a card would i try to vary my cards or just copy two versions across your whole deck one for mode and damage the other for heal and maybe damage bar more move as well so i could completely craft a card to do whatever i want and i could have just two versions of the same card Hmm. Well, I would have one copy of the Mind's Weakness. <laughs> if I could like... So basically, what you're, I guess what you're kind of describing is Gloom Draft in a, in a way, which is Gripe's um, like kind of um, homebrew mode for playing Gloomhaven is. Which is called Gloom Draft, which is where you draft cards, uh, the abilities onto different characters. And you can end up with a multitude of different cards with different characters. Which is always quite fun. Um, so we kind of would be like that. But if you're talking about like crafting a card, like I could design a card, then obviously I would design it like stupid. Like it would be like attack everything, even even unrevealed enemies. <laughs> attack fifty, target all enemies, even those unrevealed. Non burn, seems balanced. <laughs> But if I have to take real cards, then, I mean, the Mind's Weakness would be one of them. Then I'd probably build a card around, like, doing doing stupid stuff with Mind's Weakness. 
So I'll do like Mind's Weakness plus Inferno. That's what I would do. Probably. That'd be fun. Mind's Weakness plus nine other copies of Inferno. <laughs> That seems, like, pretty fair. Right. Uh, we got to make a decision here. I, I'm just going to go Dangerous Contraption. I, ultimately, we could maybe get that enhancement, but... <sighs> Let's just keep ourselves ticking along. Right. Do I need to... I mean, I just remove these, I guess. The extra target cards come in use, actually, a little bit. It's been good. Don't usually go for that very early. The math's not really uh, on your side for that, but it's been good. You just take 10 times Flurry of Axis. Yeah, well, Flurry of Axis is also insanely good. But I think Inferno plus Mind's Weakness, because it technically is a melee attack. That's what you want to do. You want to find things that are technically melee attacks. So then you can just abuse them with the Mind's Weakness. Oh, we leveled up. Sweet, I didn't even see that. Level five. We've got Mass Hysteria and we've got Frozen Mind. So, these two cards are like, this is like not one of the best levels really for the Mind Thief. Mass Hysteria is kind of okay. Um, once your deck gets pretty good, like we, we don't complete many battle goals. So, our, our perks are not great. When you have better perks, you can sometimes flip some nice things with Mass Hysteria. Also, it generates ice, which is great. It's target four. The model effect is so-so. You know, can prevent a bit of damage, but it's not incredible. 12 initiative is great. The bottom, you never really want to have two augments at any one time. Like, I don't, I've tried that a couple of times. It's never worked. It's always just felt really bad. So I don't think you'd ever really want to use the bottom of this. Like Typically, I would go for Mass Hysteria because it's just a very safe card. It's a ranged attack. You know, It can be useful. Can sometimes do damage against non-shielded enemies it's not bad but when you play increased difficulty there's a lot of shield kicking around so uh it can sometimes do nothing frozen mind is interesting but you have to get rid of the mind's weakness to play frozen mind which you just don't want to do so unfortunately frozen mind just doesn't work out there does there can get to a point where you get so much ice that you can sometimes use frozen mind if you've got complementary mercenaries who are making a lot of ice and they're not using it which is rare because ice is one of the best elements in the game so you know if your spell weaver is making ice she's probably using cold fire if your elementalist is making ice they're probably using like shaping the ether to stun things themselves or using winter's edge or something so like ice is a really premium element mind thief can make a lot of it but you need cards like mass hysteria to make it so it's kind of a bit awkward because you kind of go perverse edge into frigid apparition anyway and then like then you're hoping to like draw more ice you can obviously get a bit more ice with hostile takeover but yeah i just i just never found it to be to be that good the bottom of this is sometimes okay you can you know make an enemy move into a trap but very situational and small really 81 initiative too <clears throat> Doesn't Mind's Weakness plus insta-kill augment sound like a plan? Um, oh, you mean like play like the level 9 um, augment? Um, no, I, just think your, I just think your hand size is a bit taxed in that respect. Like having two up all the times. You have to remember to discard them, then make them... I feel like you I feel like you can rotate them in a in a way that you don't necessarily need to have to. Like so if you can rotate them in a in a good way, I don't necessarily feel like you really need that. So as long as you can make sure you have the mind's weakness on the attack that you want to attack like the elite or whatever, and then you would then play the next one up and then kill the um the regular or whatever. Or you could just provide ice for cold fire spell. Well, yeah, that's the other thing, right? Is that is that cold fire is objectively probably the better spell, so or the better card and ability. 
So it's very difficult for you to say, I want that ice, please, so that I can use this. And they're like, well, I'm playing cold fire. I'm going to stun three things. Like, mm. Okay. Like that's, that's some of the problems sometimes with Gloomhaven is that there are certain abilities that are just better than others, which is fine. But it does mean that it becomes very difficult if you're playing cooperatively to actually kind of do what you want to do because sometimes you just can be like ah oh, well it's better to do this one of the reasons why i don't like playing with eclipse is it is when you're playing with the eclipse if you're playing a character who also uses dark it's basically like you just never get to use it because when, when dark's there you could not have any possible better use for dark than that character so it's like what what, what do you do it's, well I, I can't use it it's really hard is there going to be another scenario i think so i think we got time for one more you like Frozen Mind Bottom? Doomed Compass? Yeah, I guess it is. Pilfer's not bad. Silent Scream Bottom is actually, like, not bad either. Like, push everything and potentially push three. It's probably between this and this, but the thing is with Mass Hysteria, it's almost like a card that you just don't want to play. Like, I might play it one or two scenarios, if that, and then we'll be getting rid of it. You'll use it out of spite. <laughs> yeah, I guess you could do that. They can go pretty early, though. Uh... The thing is that I'm never going to want Frozen Mine in my hand. I'm occasionally going to want Mass Hysteria in my hand, just for like a 12 initiative. So I guess I'll take it. I don't love it though. In fact, it might not. I might not even play it. Yeah, I might not even play it. Yeah, I might not even play it. Um, let's go. Let's go for this. Also, I should turn the house rules on. Although I believe that they're slightly bugged still, but. Good to turn them on anyway. Okay, let's do... Let's donate, just in case we, like, lose money or some, something crazy. Uh, let's donate with... You. Nice. I don't think I'll donate quite yet here. I think I will keep saving. I want to maybe get another enhancement here. I definitely want to get another enhancement here. In fact, that's what I will do straight away now. I want to make sure that we don't accidentally lose gold. So let's go for the plus one on here. Always good. Makes your life so much easier. Very easy one to go for. With all of this gold, we've got to be looking to get something crazy going on here, right? This would be the get jump on this. Would probably be like a very smart move. Because we'll be playing this as a move five forever. Um, other thing to do is I sometimes like to put a plus move on scurry. Sometimes I like to put wound on here. In fact, wound on here would be great. It's only 45 gold. Oh, that's super good. All right. We've got so much wound on this team. Right. City encounter. Which option are we going to go for, chat? Your choice. Which option? One or two? So, you get word from a contact that there is trouble brewing down at the east walls and decide to investigate. What you find is a large contingency of the city's Savas workforce. The best builders you'll find anywhere. In open rebellion against the construction managers demanding better pay for the specialized work they perform. We had this last time. The city would be a lifeless pile of rocks without us, one of the Savas yells. It's time we see some of its prosperity. The manager on the other side of the argument looks like a captured mouse. Not sure at all how to get out of the situation. So do we option one, talk to the Savas, appealing to their sense of duty and community, or do we talk to the managers and attempt to get the Savas better pay? We do have uh, 
track hard with us, with Craig with us. We went with the Karen option last time, nothing happened. <laughs> Funnily enough, apparently going to speak to the manager doesn't get you everything. Doesn't it seem like I draw this encounter every stream? I have one's gone for that as well. Are you kidding me, guys? Come on. You just can't get the manager to budge on his position, and he only gets angrier with continued pushing. The Savas eventually agreed tentatively to continue work, but the underlying problem remains. That'll keep coming up until we vote option one, by the way. <laughs> that doesn't sound right. You need to speak to my manager about it. All right. Well, my manager is Craig. <laughs> it's not Craig. <laughs> oh no where's craig why didn't craig come how strange oh i know why is this not working oh no oh it looks like he's not available right now wow what a shame what a shame <laughs> what a shame. Wait, wait, wait for it. Wait. There you go. I refunded you. I refunded you, okay? That was what you were really looking for, right? I mean, all people who want to speak to the manager want a refund. So th I guess this icon here shows you that there was a chest in there. Right, are we going to do Ruinous Rift? I really wanted to do so side quests today, though. I also don't know if we have time to do that one. What is it, 10 rounds? Uh, we might have kind of time to do a 10 round one. 10 rounds. Yeah, sure. We got invis and stuff. You want a refund and to speak with Craig? Oh, I don't know about that. I honestly don't know why that didn't work. Everything on my end says that it should have worked. Right, another vote. Another vote. Which option? Option one or option two, chat? Choose wisely. We are trudging through some foothills when we hear the strangest sound in the distance. It sounds vaguely like wolves howling, but higher pitched, and there's a rhythm and a melody to it. You crest a nearby hill and survey the area, spying a pack of vermilings standing in a circle and singing. Singing is the best way you can think to describe it anyway. Occasionally during the song, they also clap and dance around. Do we option one? The song must serve some nefarious purpose. Attack the vermilings. Or option two, move closer and enjoy the music. Option three. <laughs> does my thief like other vermings or not? Yeah, I think she does. I think they get along. Pretty sure they get along. <laughs> Name your character, choose wisely. Move closer and enjoy the music. Good choice. 3 XP. Not wanting to disturb the ritual, you inch a little closer, staying out of sight, and then sit and listen. They go through a number of different tunes, and you feel enriched by the experience. It's like the only good encounter with Vermlings in the whole of Gloomhaven, guys. <laughs> like the only one. Never trust a Vermling, apart from them. Ruinous crit. Hale seems almost happy as she trudges through the mud with you. Eager to help fight back demons and undead. It's been so long since I've been outside of Gloomhaven, she says, swaying the elemental sensor back and forth as she walks. The city is necessary for my studies, but it feels good to take a small break and travel this plane again. 
and with so much less danger this time as well. You look at the Aether questioningly. Sure, mm. cultists and demons aren't exactly friendly encounters, but last time I traveled these lands, well, that's something I swore I would never speak of. Ooh. Hale grows silent until you arrive at the crypt. Opening the ancient doors, you half expect the place to be teeming with cultists and demons once again. But the stone halls are as silent and barren as death. You move towards the main chamber where you find the giant rift, hovering above a demonic altar. Well, you certainly weren't kidding, Hale says. This thing is a beauty. The girth and stability, quite impressive. Hale walks around the perimeter of the, the what? Altar, throwing sand in the air and watching it fall. I'm pretty sure I can close it. Thanks <laughs> to old Stonebreaker's sensor here. Excuse me? I can't imagine the forces on the other side of this rift are going to be all too happy about it, though. <laughs> Hale raises the sensor above her head with one arm and plunges the other elbow deep into the rift. Gather round, ladies and gentlemen. This is going to be one killer party. Impressive girth. The girth is very important. Well, Hale seems to think so. Right. Well, we're not going to take any long rest in this scenario, are we? Let's be honest. To survive one. Oh, take any short rests. Yes. <laughs> yes, I think I can manage that. Kill five or more monsters. Okay. All good. She was impressed by both the girth and stability, which makes you wonder what hell it's been up to previously. I think it's best we don't ask any questions, really. Easy. No enemies. Just stand here. I have never seen this scenario before. I like the detailing in it. I'll tell you what I could have done. I could have bought Avalanche in on this scenario, couldn't I? Probably would have been a good idea. Avalanche was probably a good idea. But I presume they're not doing anything. Like... Nothing, nothing spawning. When does it spawn? Next round. So I just do nothing for a round? Okay. I could do that. Huckfin7810 gifted a tier 1 sub to Jed Goods. Huckfin, thank you so much for gifting a sub to Damaged Goods. That's very, very kind of you. Thank you so much, Huck. I really appreciate it. Welcome to the adventuring party, Damaged Goods. Remember to thank Huck in the chat. That's very, very kind of you. Thank you so much, Huck. Welcome, Damaged Goods. Oh. What do we do? There's like nothing to do. I don't know. Are you the mind's weakness? <laughs> I guess. These enemies aren't just going to appear immediately, are they? Is that how this is going to work? I can't imagine I get a freebie on the first round. That seems a bit too easy. Well, maybe I do.
I mean, I'm just going to play Rock Slide a bunch in this scenario. <laughs> I'm going to be short resting for Rock Slide at the end of this as well. What are you doing? Are they spawn on Hale? They spawn on Hale's turn? Well, this just feels really easy right now. I don't know what this is, what's going on here. But this feels like super easy. I mean, I, I, I don't know what to do. Does hail always goes on 99, right? I say it now. Repeat that in round seven or eight. Okay. I mean, they'll have nowhere to go because I'll have so many rocks down. They'll have nowhere to spawn. Right, now I just need to do one, two, like, and hold one spot here, and then just fill these three in. Ah, it's easy. Wind Demon? Uh-oh. Uh-oh. They do stuff. Sun Demon. Frost Demon. Ah. They do have flying, though. Hmm. I forgot that I had lots of cards not in there. <laughs> I might have forgot that I only had three cards in my discard for a moment there. Yeah, Tink can recover, but that's not a good sign. <laughs> oh, no. All right, we're doing it. <laughs> oh, that's hilarious. It's all good. It's all good. Uh, it's the new. It's fine, chat. It's fine. I've already done the 2 out of 10. Good thing I blocked that wing deep in it. Hey, stop.
Well, hey, I was having a great time. Like a great time. Easy, I have nothing to do, is what you say when a scenario starts with zero and easy, it really stays that way. But at the moment, I mean, we're, I mean, it's going okay. Obviously, it could be better. Could be worse, too. I mean, they will, they will eventually try and kind of spawn in here a little bit so i have to be a bit careful with that i'll probably put like an obstacle where i am here and i'll probably move to like there or something next turn it's like there 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 Played this scenario with the battle goal always have an enemy on the map instant fail oh yeah that'll do it see that's like an example of one that's just kind of unfair and no one's gonna do that I can do Inferno on Mind Thief with Tinkerer level 9. You can, but not in digital, unfortunately, because they reworked that card. Yeah, unfortunately, our dreams of that have been uh, dashed. But yes, that is completely possible and awesome if you play the uh, tabletop version. Yeah, so they re... Um, so basically, they reworked Chimeric Formula... So the what it does instead is it allows you to take a card that you did not choose at level up or just did not bring into the scenario and bring it with you. So it's not as good, unfortunately. that a flame beam in elite what casual five shield retaliate five range three Seems legit. Do I try and ink bomb these guys? I retaliate range three though is gonna do me in. The blast fighter, thank you so much for the follow. Welcome to the quest. Hope you're doing well. Welcome in.
Yeah, there was basically the reason why they didn't put it in was to do with the animations or something. So they would have to design like an animation for every character for every card. And it just kind of broke the game. And for one card to work, they kind of just said it wasn't really worth it because it would have taken them so long to do. And so much like time and money and energy to do it. Just, they decided not to do it. Which I think is fair, you know? It's A-OK -okay with me, buddy. There is most definitely going to be ice there. Is the game countering me? Hmm. I mean, I could do that. Might be worth it. Might be not. I'm going to go in Viz this turn anyway. Take three retaliate damage. Or just not. It's going to attack for seven on my Tink. Seven. I mean, I guess I could draw the times two here. Oh, I muddled. I didn't even see the muddle. Okay. Well, it's okay. I think it's still fine. I completely didn't see the muddle there. But that's fine. I think we're all right. Maybe I should stun stun this one then, maybe? For now? Sure. It's a big attack. I kind of have to just stay here just to protect from this side. <laughs> kind of interesting. Another wind demon. Another one. Might just be a good time to use... Um, Forceful Storm top here to just immobilize these two. Might be a good idea. This guy's a bit scary.
We're obviously long resting here, I think. Seven. Actually, nine. No, I'll be fine. I'm equal on cards. I can keep... I mean, do I really care about keeping the mice weakness up, though? That is a, a kind of a valid point here, because I don't really... I'm going to be just going invis and going late as much as possible. I'm going to go early, late, early, late. So I guess, really, I, I, I'm not... I'm not aiming to kill stuff, necessarily. <clears throat> Doesn't Crack have a card that scales in damage based on number of obstacles? He does. It's um one of the higher level cards, though. Rocky End, I believe it is. It's not It's not usually very good, but this one could could be a bit better. This is where having, like, piercing bow would be great, too. Like, I would love to have something like a piercing bow here. Right? It'd be so good. The other alternative option is just to kind of wound this, maybe. Do a bit more damage here. I'm a bit nervous that I'm not doing enough stunning this round. I only really need to worry about these. These guys might have ranged attacks. That's possible. But I could probably deal with that. So I guess I do need to be a little bit more cautious here. So next round of Frost Demon's going to spawn. And it's going to spawn there. If I don't move there. So now I have to start being really clever with my movement too. If I do, it's going to spawn like down here. Which is kind of a bit better. I just don't want to spawn it here because then, well, Hale is basically dead. Because it's a frost demon and it's going to hit like a truck. Roomstone looks scarier than the grove. It is pretty bad. But when you think about it, that there's only really... Three enemies right now that are causing us any trouble, really. Which is this wind demon, this sun demon, and this wind demon. Like every every other enemy in this room is a little bit annoying, but honestly, we could probably just roll with it. It's not gonna be that bad. What I'm most concerned about now is if these two go early, so early, that they just kill Hale. Like it's possible. They go early, they just go for her. I can't get stun shot back, which is really what I would love to have here. So I think I have to go for Forceful Storm. I have to go on 29. I don't think I can do much better than that. I long rest here because I may as well. And... Honestly, I probably just look to tank whatever this guy does. Could do an attack 6 on this. With Crankbow. This might also be a kind of scenario where I should just discard cards to damage constantly. And don't really worry about it. Alright, we got kind of lucky there with... with... All of that. Gonna keep this guy fairly low. Nice bless.
You cleared Grove. First attempt. I lost on the other day. Not shot what all the fuss is about. Your level 9 spell. We've had a field day. <laughs> yeah, that'll do it. That will do it. So I think I need to keep Scurry. I I could probably get rid of Fearsome Blade here. Cranium Overload at some point might be quite good. You know, just blow up one of these really annoying enemies. But unfortunately, they're all elites. The really annoying ones are all elites right now. Hostile Takeover doesn't do a lot. But I could force an elite enemy to, like, just not target me for a turn. That could be big. That's as good as a stun in this scenario. It really is. You know we were talking about scenarios where disorienting flash might be good. Uh, maybe this one. <laughs> maybe we should have got it. <laughs> so we stun this. We go into the night. Being disarmed here is pretty big, actually. That means I can't really... I can't really do much. I'm just gonna have to sit here and kind of take it. Um... I may want to consider just chucking down this bot as just cannon fodder. Oh, we got another sun demon turned up. That's fun. This could eat maybe two attacks. Could do a big heal. Play my bot. That'll be two cards down though. I have to be a little bit careful here about just burning cards to damage too. But burning cards super aggressively here is not a bad thing. Can't be a bad thing. Well, I'll take that. Am I being disarmed, though, on my Mind Thief? That's maybe a bit of a problem. Take two range four disarm. Yeah, I am. Okay. That is, that is a big problem. Um... I think we burn a card for that. Because otherwise we're ending up on slightly, slightly lower health there. Them going invis is very scary here. Oh, I should have done this. Oh, I messed that up. Where's the next spawn? Over there. That's okay. <clears throat> that chain disarm will suck for stuns. Yep. It's going to be a bit of a problem, I think. Three more rounds. Whoa. Why did that spawn there? Just what? Why did that spawn there?
Excuse me? Should that not have spawned like... There? Ambiguous 2? Yeah, I guess it was ambiguous 2. Just got unlucky with that. Well, that's fun. Well, that's not going to be a problem at all. Um... See, this is like the unstable upheaval turn and I unfortunately burnt it. I unfortunately just unluckily got rid of it. I think I went maybe a bit too hard on rock slide and that's what's kind of caused that. I could have just avalanched on the first turn. This might be a kind of scenario to replay again and just avalanche on the first turn instead. So for example, I could, I could short rest and get stun shot and just stun something here like this. But what good is that really going to do me here? I need the crack card to just sit there. I really need a big stun right now. That's honestly what I really need. And I would have one. If I hadn't got rid of it. Hmm. I mean, net shooter doesn't really do anything here. None of these guys really do anything here right now. Tink's job is probably just going to be to take damage and just probably die to damage. anything that i would really really like right now like what would i really love to have i can destroy this obstacle does it say i can destroy it what that seems odd saying i could throw this Hmm. Kind of interesting. You would <laughs> you'd love to have some ice cream now and the good one, not the supermarket ice cream. <sighs> wow. I hope this ends well for me. I'm going to need a couple of good turns. Gotta love playing with level 6 wind demons. And sun demons. And flame demons. Seems good. Well, somehow miraculously, I did pick the right side of the room, though. For these spawners and stuff. I did. I'll tell you what also would be quite good. The sun in this scenario would be quite good too. You could just play like a load of like protective auras and stuff. You could play, what is it called? Like righteous blessing or something? Prevent all damage for a round? Like a card like that would be so good. I think I'm just contemplating whether or not I stun shot. I short rest to get stun shot back, which I, I guess I have to.
Do I just want to do this lot? Or this lot? This kind's of crazy, man. Well, here's the thing. I'm going to get disarmed again. I guess that really sucks. I just have to sit here and take damage. I guess I could have gone invis there to let Hale take that, but then this guy's gonna uh, gonna wound Hale with, with an attack five. Oh, actually, no, the fire's not there. It was being attack five. I guess that might have been okay. Spoiler-free side note: the reward for this mission actually differs from the paper version in one very important detail. Let's find out. Hopefully, I'll find out at least. Let me move that. Not that I really want to, though. I mean, they can't really expect you to win this scenario, can they? Honestly. Like, in terms of by beating the enemies. Like, this is very specifically a scenario that's quite clearly meant... Quite clearly meant for you to just burn cards and sit here, right? Isaac expects you to win it with the board empty. I doubt that very, very much. <laughs> Come on, Hail. Only two more rounds, I believe. I believe. So again, I'm just burning cards to damage here, really. Like that's my that's my role here. Right? The only thing I could do is short rest, but basically I'm just sacrificial tinkerer at this point. I just don't have any... If I had a stun on Crackheart, I'd be, like, sold right now. I'd be so happy right now. Honestly, I'm dead this turn. So what all I may as well do is just go on 19, play the bomb of flamethrower, hit this for two, and just like pray. And now I need to swap with my cracker onto this side of the field, I think. Am I my rewards not working, chat?
I th apparently it locked me out. I'm disarmed. Oh yeah, I'm disarmed. Well, I guess I wouldn't even get to do the attack too then. That was never really the plan, I guess, but sure. Right, hopefully they're back now, chat. I don't know what happened there. I've missed spicy, spicy, noop, 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 and we missed Craig. Let me see if I can um, <laughs> refund them. Spicy. There you go. <laughs> Let me refund the ones that were not successful. All right, those are done. Well, that's all of them, apparently. Maybe the others did actually go through. Okay. What are they doing? They're disarming me again? Oh, they're doing an AOE attack? Flame demons? All right, high priority target. And my job is just to tank. Tankera! Do your thing. Where's the next spawner? Up here. Oh, there's a spawn there. That's fine. One more round after this, huh? Honestly, I need to find a way to get over here. I guess after the Tinker is dead, I need to. This is going to be close. We kind of need a, a round where they just don't do anything. Uh, I don't think I'm going to get that lucky, unfortunately. Oh no, the mass disarm. Uh, is this it? Oh, this is it, right? One turn. Because now they're going to go. Oh, jeez. You did your job, Tink. Yikes. The big times two. Wow. 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 <laughs> yeah, boy. A little bit spicy.
Well, kind of brutal. <laughs> I think maybe with Avalanche, we could have done it. Uh, with Unstable Upheaval as well, actually. So I should have had Unstable Upheaval. I let it go to try get keep Rock Slide because I thought that would keep me in it. But actually, it's those goddamn demons. Just so brutal. If I had one turn where I could Unstable Upheaval and just stun all of those guys, we would have won. Probably. Maybe not. We might have lost on the last round. Because we were like down to like one... One round less, right? We needed to live one more round after that, I think. So we, we we managed to survive. That was at the end of like round nine, I guess. We need like one more round or something. So we, we might still have or maybe two more rounds. We might we might still have lost. But it would have given us it. You think you can kill for the first one to two turns and then switch to heavy CC? Yeah, possibly. I think the problem is is that the enemies are like, the first enemies that spawn are not that much of a problem, but then you got that Wind Demon, and... Trying to kill them is really hard. That, that Flame Demons are the worst as well, really. Like, how are you supposed to defeat them? They're so close, and that range on that Retaliate is so bad. You just kind of have to take the Retaliate damage. Okay, well, it was a good try. It was a good try. We came close. We made a couple mistakes, and... I think that's uh, that's the kind of scenario where a couple of mistakes plus maybe the, not the nicest RNG. Not the worst RNG, though, I would say. But not the nicest. And uh, we ended up getting burned. It ends at the start of 10. Yeah, maybe we had like one more then. Got out of control fast there at the end. Well, it was, it was the combination of those two AoEs together that did it, right? And then we just couldn't really do anything about it. All right, well, I think we'll probably try that next time. We'll try it again. We'll refresh look next Monday. That's good. On a trip to the new market, you see a curious seat chart prominently displayed in a Valrough merchant stall. Ah, I see this interests you, he says, while holding it up, taking great care not to damage it. I've been told this map will lead you to a location of untold riches, wonders beyond anything you have seen before. The Valrough gestures grandly with his free hand and his smile grows wide. How can you say no to this? Just make me an offer. Right. I will let you vote on this chat, but I have strong feelings about this one. <laughs> I have strong feelings. Which option should we go for? One or two? Option one is the map does look valuable. Decide to bargain for it. Or refuse to deal with the merchant. <laughs> what characters do I have unlocked? None at the moment, just these three. I'm just playing the starters at the moment. Maybe it could be a map to a treasure island. Maybe. <laughs> Maybe. <laughs> I don't know. <laughs> Stop leading the witness. Wait, you're not on trial. Twitch chat on trial. Maybe a map to a treasure planet. Yeah, remember that film? Hooray! Good job, everybody. Good job. 20 collective gold. Of some amount of haggling back and forth. You settle on a price and pay for the map. You recognize some of the landmarks as you'll be able to find this place of untold treasure by hiring a ship. I mean, she has the most, right? That actually balanced out pretty fairly. I would say. Huh. That seems fair. Sunken vessel. Nice. And that we need that anyway, right? Because we need some more side scenarios for this. It's a good idea. We definitely need some more side scenarios. So that's uh, that's good. So maybe we'll do that next time. 
Like, we'll retry Ruinous Rift next time. And we'll also try probably Sunken Vessel. And hopefully we get Ruinous Rift done. And then we can go off and, uh, and do the next sort of one in the chain. Awesome. Uh, all right. Well, I think I'm going to wrap it for today. Oh, one thing I do want to get, though, before we finish, before I forget, is I did notice that we had unlocked a uh, a new hand item. Battle axe for the two... Battle axe just for the two, um, two characters of Frigid Apparition at some point during the scenario. Always good. And I think probably by this as well and to be honest maybe I might have an opportunity there we go there we go some new items on uh on stun lady okay there we have it there is the end of this week's episode unfortunately we lost ruinous rift right at the end now quite a hard scenario i think i played it fairly well but we did come up one turn short probably because we didn't have that unstable upheaval so we'll probably start out next week's episode actually just trying it again this time with sort of some better cards and a better game plan but i thought our game plan was was pretty good but ultimately we came up one maybe two turns short there at the end which is pretty typical for that scenario so not going to hurt myself too much on that one but looking forward to trying again next week if you did enjoy the video please do like and subscribe it helps me out so so much on youtube also come over to twitch.tv slash mandatory quest where i stream this live on mondays or you could always come hang out on wednesdays and sunday too where i'm also streaming gloomhaven wednesdays weird builds and community challenges and on sunday we play multiplayer with viewers so we have our own separate save that we're playing through just on hard difficulty but with viewers and we're kind of doing everything and just having fun and just yeah enjoying playing gloomhaven okay all that's left for me to say is thank you again so much for watching i will catch you in the next one bye I think so. Yeah. Oh, oh, oh. Scout oh, the rip. Rip. That's the first thing from Jeff. That's the blessing so, from uh, uh, Isaac. At this point, can we uh, get your approval to add an additional attack modifier deck uh -huh. for allies in the digital? <laughs>